I morning. think we were going to have some people come to talk to s public comment, but I don't see anybody. Yeah. Well, there's some public here. Anybody have a comment? I know you're here for the curb cut, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we won't do that until um, Alfred gets well, here. Here comes public comment. Here comes public comment. Yes. <laughs> Have you started yet? Yep. Yep, 7 o'clock. Is it? I don't have a watch. Yeah. Yeah. We're ready for public comment. Would you have any comments? We're expecting that you're going to make a comment or two, yes. Mr. Public. And I'm going to keep track of what I'm saying. Right, because we don't have a lot of time under this yep. public comment section. Okay. So we appreciate your coming, Peter. All right. There. OK. Um, as, as I did last year, I went and I pulled Cherville on three sides of the road, or two sides of three sections of the road, almost a mile long each. And I got roughly twice as much Cherville this year as I did last year. And um, Over so, the same stretches. The same, same stretches. Yeah. And, but there were some places that I got just a little bit last year, and we recorded. Mm -hmm. it was loud. <laughs> um, and uh, and some then I didn't get any this year in those places where I pulled it. Oh, and last year it was wet and it was very easy to pull. The roots came right up, and my tap roots uh, were, it ranged anywhere from this long to maybe that long on two to three foot high plants. Hmm. Um, so you used a shovel? No, not last year. No, this year. This year, I in places where the soil was wet enough or damp enough, I could still pull roots up maybe half the places. And then I used a, um, a fork, a garden fork, for the tough spots. Hmm. Um, and, but I, there were some that broke off. And, and all that means is it's because it's a, a biennial. Um, what I'm seeing and pulling up is the second year, not the first year. And that means there's still first year plants down there. And according to, I don't know, your information, or one of the others that was online, mm -hmm. seeds might last five years or more. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm asking you to do is to, I think, I, well, I'm not sure, Denise, you emailed me back and said that you're going to move early, which would be very soon because this he's, is good. He's, he's a, he started mowing on Saturday. On Saturday, right? good. And he's running two tractors. Two tractors, wow, OK. Um, and he doesn't, um, John can help me out. He said that he doesn't use a mulching Thing, he uses something, just a regular kind of thing. Cut yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's kind like of a rotary lawnmower. Yeah. And, and, and if, if uh, when you mow your lawn, you find out that the wet grass gets stuck in there, mm -hmm. depending on what it is. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had to clean mine out five times in two hours, or three hours, actually, yeah. because it was clogging up the machine. Right. Get, and at any rate, what happened is, is that last year, I didn't have any, I only put signs up on Fowler Road. And then, um, and I didn't, I just didn't even think of putting them up on the West Church Road. Mm -hmm. So we came around the corner from somewhere down around by Mike's. That's where he stopped. Mike. Mike um, Fowler. Fowler. And he came up the road a couple, of hundred, a couple of thousand feet before he started mowing again at my driveway. Now this year I have plants in my driveway for the first time. That means they were from last, you know, a year ago. This is the second year mm -hmm. on them. So that there were plants there last year um, that I just couldn't see because they weren't flowering right. in, in the high grass. But I think um, you've got a real long term problem here that's only going to get worse every yep. single year. Yep. It costs a lot more money every year. I think your your flyer here said something about mowing five times a year, five times a summer. Uh, if you want wait, wait, whose flyer is this? This is, is one, one this is the one that uh, was a link that Joanne Garten had sent. Oh from yeah. the state. Yeah. So um, if it wasn't this one, it was one of the others that was on Front Porch Forum the other day. Um, no, here it is, three to five times during the growing season, so for over six months. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to propose that you try several things at the same time. I've worked uh, you know, one thing at a time all my life, finish one thing, start the next. Mm -hmm. I, at 70, I'm learning that it's a real advantage into trying several things at the same time and finding out what works. Mm -hmm. and, and I would propose and I, I, that you find a section of, and I, I drove around some of the roads this afternoon. It's the worst road that I found was Adamant Road between Fowler Road and Lightning Ridge Road. And, uh, and that's going back into Gales Field. That's already yeah. 300 feet back from the road. And on the other side into the Giamuso's property, all the way back to the wood line. And I, well, I, I, I stopped and I looked at it and I talked to Mike. And it's. Thanks, Peter. It's this 
very well-defined rectangle just up the hill from his drive, from his mm -hmm. uh, garage. He has it's only, he's only noticed it for two years now. He doesn't know how it got there, but it's like somebody planted it. it it's not it's not spreading by itself, mm -hmm. um, and he does get it brush hogged. And so if somebody brush hogged it and they started there, that's where they would have laid the seed mm -hmm. from from previous. Right. Place. Well, I know that's why we we added an extra mowing yeah. cycle. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. So How we've, we've got five. well, we've got two problems. We've got the roadsides, which get it out here, and it's coming up Route 14, 12, right. 14 from right. Randolph. It's been there for 20. It's been working its way for over 20 years, and uh, and it's closed uh, pastures down there in hayfields because you can't hay this stuff and you can't the cows won't graze in it. Yeah, it takes over. It's it's almost as bad at, at taking over a, a field, or maybe as bad as uh, as uh, um, not weed. Japanese knotweed. And, but Japanese knotweed seems to outdo the chervil. If you see a stand of Japanese knotweed, there's mm -hmm. no chervil in it that I could find in any of the stands I looked at. Um, I would suggest that what you do is you find an area where it's just along the roadside still, so hasn't gone in, because it won't do any good to, to do roadside mowing to test it if it's out beyond the roadside already. And mow it five times this summer with a clean mower. Somebody who's just kind of dedicated, I know yours is broken, but if you can find something like that and do a section, just that single road, so that Doug doesn't come on that road at all mm -hmm. from, with contamination from anything else. And and try that and see if it really does work to mow it five times a year. Do we have, um, has he mowed? Because you were telling me the same thing about the road. Has well, well, what <coughs> I was saying to you. And he doesn't, he hasn't mowed that section yet, Not right? yet. I mean, it's, at, it's in flower now. It needs to be done this week or next week or we're, Right, I would say this week. Yeah, because yeah, well, it's already been in flower for over a week. I know. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. two weeks, and I think that's about all you can depend on. Is yeah. The first yeah. ones are already going to start to see pretty soon, because they just—it's been blooming in stages. Mm -hmm. They're going progressive. Because I can call yes. Doug and ask him to do that he section should, right away. Yeah, why don't you have him do that and tell him not to come up my road, please? And I'll, I'll take also, care of my road sets. I'm also—I I have pulled all the plants I can find. And I will continue because I've got more out since last last week uh, on the on the three mile sections that I three one mile sections that I emailed you about Denise mm -hmm. and John. So I'd like to keep that from being mowed and that would be my experiment to see if pulling it uh, aggressively. So what um, do you what do you all right so I'm gonna call Doug and I'm gonna ask him to do this Adamant Road between the Fowler from, Road and Lightning Ridge. The intersection road. of Leonard Road it's all down, down to um, it's, oh, it's not north of that intersection. It's south of the intersection, but right. it's already it's too far gone to be a good experiment. It well, I'm just saying, no, we're just talking about it. mowing it before it goes to seed right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So Denise wants to get them there tomorrow. All right, and it's part way down the hill towards the Adam co mm -hmm. and then it's and, a long... And, and you know what? Have them swing up the driveway in Geomusas and mow that. Take two minutes, because that's, we'll that's, that's going to that's gonna seed our roads. Is Gene also going to have a fit? Talk, well, well, I think he'd be happy, but... Well, talk to him because uh, he's trying to figure out what to do. He's at a loss right now. And uh, right and now. then Gales Field across the way is, is acres of it already. So, um, mm -hmm. and this is what, you know, how Randolph spread out. And, and I talked to a farmer down there like four years ago, and, and they said, uh, it's gone. Mm -hmm. You can't... You, know, you can plow it under, you can plant corn if you plow it under every mm -hmm. year, but you can't use it for hay or pasture. Hmm. And, yeah, it's some pretty wet. And down in Randolph, tough. north of Randolph, just a little bit, I talked to a homeowner who said that she was out uh, in her front yard and her house was surrounded by it. And she said her husband's had a losing battle with it for years. Yep. It's just encroaching on the lawn further, no matter what he does. It's, it's just creeping up towards yep. the house. And it's going to completely engulf the house. So if that starts happening, I don't know what it does to property values, but you, know, you can't get rid of it. I wouldn't buy a house that was like that. Right. So, All right. So yeah. I, I will follow up with okay. Doug. And have him not mow from the full length of the road. Six, eight, okay. Seven, don't six. mow. And I will take care of that. But the triangle is already, you know, from. Okay. So I'm trying to. Yeah. I'm, I'm full trying. length of Fowler Road. Full so don't. Of so road. don't mow Fowler Road. Or this pond road, yeah. or Old Crest Church, 
and I will take as long as it takes to get flowering plants out of there. Okay, Bliss Pond Road. Okay. Yeah, I hop on my bicycle and I stop every time I and see And this plant. is this experiment thing you're talking about? Yeah. And we'll see how, how it goes. This will be the second year that I've done the same thing in the same area. Okay, so, so I'm going to tell, and so Alfred knows too, because Peter's going to take care of pulling or pulling, pulling, pulling the chervil on any flowering chervil. Fowler Road, Bliss Pond Road, and Old West Church that's Road. That's three miles of road. And I got all the stuff from the, on my, the length of my property on Singleton Road. Yeah, and I came up that your road. And it's bad on Lightning Ridge. You've been Ridge. pulling it already, too. So, uh, yeah. Okay. At Lightning Ridge, Greater it's Rock. It's bad. Greater right Rock near place. my house. Yeah. It's and it's just as bad. It's even worse going down from the intersection towards the co-op for the first few hundred feet. Okay, so, no. I just have a question. And oh. not below that. Yeah. Peter, what, how are you going to take care of this stuff? I'm pulling it. I, I pulled three to four hundred plants over the last okay. four days. Okay, and then what are you doing with it, though? And putting We're it in putting the road, it in a road and crushing it and drying it out and it dries so, out every day. And if it hasn't gone to seed, it's it, the idea is you have to do it before it goes to seed, then it won't spread. Right. Okay. If you're going to seed, it's so too late. are you going to come and level the, the road out after we grade it and it's all balled up with gravel? It's because already off on the edge. And, and, and if, Alfred, it's not a problem. You know, I knew this was going to be a shit grader. Grader. Maybe a problem. You don't need to grade it, it the, the week that we throw it out. Just wait till it dries out. In a, in a week, it'll turn to dust and it'll be out of there. But it, it's, it's, it's less of a problem than if Calus gets completely covered in gerbil. That's a greater and more expensive problem than, than anything so else. So when I see you throwing it out on the road, I just won't grade those roads. No. Right. right. It's a hassle to. I hear you. Don't grade them out. It's a hassle for everybody. John, come on, really? It's, it's I, don't, I don't need that. It's an asshole for everybody. That's an attitude. I think what we're asking. I ask just asked a simple question: How you was going to deal with it? Right. Yeah. So you're not. And so. I did that. Yeah. So we're not going to grade when. No. When you're pulling. Done. In a week. Uh, Peter wants to. Peter's trying to. I'll Peter is. Folks. And if it dries, then it's going to be a little bit. Um. Yeah. Peter is going to try an experiment, Alfred, to see if he can help eradicate this. Problem. It's a very invasive. Stephanie? I'd like to ask Peter something. Have you been in touch with Victoria Weber in, in um, uh, Bethel? Victoria Weber has been fighting Cherville. She was having yeah. 20 years ago. To the, to the North she had a campaign. In, and she used to have a so website okay, yeah. on uh, push, the Herald of Randolph. And I mean, I've, I've talked to the reporter, because, the editor at the Herald so of Randolph. So, the, 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 the reason I'm asking is that I would love to not I mean, I used to you know her, but I haven't you know, talked to her, you know, flag but I'm just really interested to know what her experience, where, whether she's had any success yeah. in 20 years. It would be interesting to know. Uh, Bethel? What? In Bethel, uh, okay. yeah, she All was right. in Bethel. Okay, I did talk. Uh, I went down okay. and talked right. to the assistant editor, I think she is of the Herald and Randolph, and she's been pulling for 20 years and writing articles on it for over 20 years maybe in the Herald. Maybe it's Victoria. Uh, I don't think so, but okay. it might be. And, and she's been pulling it on, on her road and trying to get other people to do something, and nobody wants to do anything. So has she made any progress? Yeah, her road looks good. Okay, and that's what I was curious. It would be really interesting to <laughs> Yeah, it would be no. It's what needs progress, to be done. If you do certain mm -hmm. And you yes. can't throw it on the grass because it will re -root. Right. You gotta put it on the road so it dries out and, and gets crushed and dies. I'm not sure that it'll be root, but it won't dry out. You and put that tuber really on the grass, it's gonna root. root. I well, promise you. The, the 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 real big thing is to get it to dry out quickly because it's so right. wet mm -hmm. that it won't dry out if it doesn't get crushed. So mm -hmm. yeah. it's it's gotta get crushed and the cars are right. the easiest way to do it. Yeah. And there have been people arguing that no, you should bag it, take it all the yeah. landfill. That's really prohibitive. You just can't. And, and if, if it hasn't gone to seed yet, it's relatively safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And okay. the sap. Because I know Doug did mention the fact that if you throw it in the road and it's seeded, mm -hmm. then the cars and Absolutely. stuffs just yeah. make it worse because it spreads no it. Pull it at that point. Right. right. <laughs> no, because then you, you might as well leave it right where it, where it is. is. Yeah. Or bag it. One of the two. Yeah. But we got to hit it before it goes to seed. Is part of what Joanne's doing with the in um, 
resilient roads. Is she identifying roads that are in really bad shape with these invasives? Do you remember? I don't remember. And I, I do remember her saying that she doesn't really have the ability within the, the framework what she's doing. of her project yeah. to spend a lot of time on invasives. She's, but she, I think she said as she goes around on her she's bike, mar she's going to mark it, right? She's going to indicate yeah. where they are. Well, I mean, and this stuff is really bad stuff. If people can't hay their fields, that's a problem. Yeah, it's marching yeah. out into Gale's field right, right now. Yeah. 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 Okay. I don't, I don't want it on my field, so I'll tell you right now, it's not going to happen. And so I'll take care of the mowing. I don't want anyone mowing my roadside. I mow my own. Okay. Um, and, you know, the, the old Vermont way was, and I don't know if the law has changed. I spoke with Denise about it this afternoon. It used to be the law, Representative Bob Kinsey, dairy farmer from Crassberry, told me about this. It was the law that you were responsible for mow the mowing of the roadside in front of your property. I don't and know you could you actually mean. get fined, or the town could pay to mow it, and then you could be billed. Yeah. And something changed somewhere along the way since the 60s. We should have asked and, you more. And understand. that's the problem, because if everyone mowed their roadside, your mower that you're doing that with is leaving the seed on your property. You go and mow the entirety of a town, you're spreading the seed, the seed all yeah. over the town. Yeah. So yeah. that's the problem, right. you know. Well, also, isn't it true, as Peter was suggesting, if you mow it five times, right. you might keep it down because it doesn't have enough chlorophyll. You start it. before a flower. You'll kill it. You started yeah. weeks ago. Right. It's the first thing up. It's the first parsnip plant we plant that flowers, so it's real easy to find that way. Um, all the other parsnip uh, variety family members are invasive and from other places except for uh, Queen Anne's lace, which is native and plants and, and animals eat it. Animals don't eat this stuff. Yeah, yeah no, I know that. No, yeah. I'm saying, so, so it's not I'm just yeah. asking, yeah. if you keep mowing it down, I know that people have suggested that about Bishop's Week, where, yeah. where I had a big oh, problem. Oh, that's what I was so saying. I had a big problem in North Calais, yeah. that if you keep mowing it over and over again, yeah. It doesn't have enough chlorophyll. So, so when, when I was a, a senior in high school, I stopped digging clams commercially, and I went to work for the highway department. And my main job was, in the summer, was running a tractor like Doug Grout does, up all the roads and mowing the roadsides. Um, the town did it. And you know, I'd like to explore the idea of, in addition to Doug Grout doing his thing, if we're going to do, need to do it in between, we have a town mower and we employ a part-time employee in the summer to mow. Or one of our existing employees, I don't know if they have time, we have so much work, but. Mm -hmm. um, well, it was an interesting thought about uh, requiring individuals to mow their own because, because now that you have a charter, it's conceivable, I don't know, because I haven't looked into it, but it's conceivable you could have but the farmers all owned their own tractors back then, and now you'd have to hire somebody who's this law dated. This da law dated back mm -hmm. to when people use a scythe. Well, but but now people would hire <laughs> somebody. Not not everybody you'd have the same problem. Scything yeah. their roots. Yes. Yeah. Um, just one last thing. Yeah, because we got to move on. Um, I, I also checked all the way down to Montpelier on the county road. It's starting in Com County Road and working up from Montpelier. We've only got a few individual plants. One person could pull uh, maybe uh, 20 or 30 plants between here and, and Montpelier. Mm -hmm. That's including East Montpelier. Okay. But, but, you know, it's, it's, it's working its way up through that. Right. And right now, pulling one plant is going to make a huge difference. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Peter. All right. Thanks, Peter. Is All right. there anything on the roads on the rest of the committee? Or is there? Or Should I stay here? Is there anything else like this on the rest of the meeting? No, just no. other controversies. No. Okay. I could go back and work in my garden. Go back and pull some more. Thank you. I, I am go make some chervil stew. Chervil stew. And I do it in the afternoon and when the sun's coming down, the late afternoon, because it is the sap is phototrophic, which means that it's uh, it's irritating. It burns. I had a wash. Chervil yeah. does? Yeah. yeah, it burns. It's lower. Not as bad. It's lower than the others. It's the lowest. Yeah. But uh, so you don't want to get it in your eyes. Yeah. And, and I pull it very handed, but then I go back in and I wash my hands. Yeah. Right. And, and when it dries, it's no longer, theoretically, it's no longer yeah. a problem. So All right, thank okay you. The next day right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate All right, Alfred. Do we have um, your Ben Reed? Right. Do you want to sit down? So we're going to do cut cuts.
Curb cut. All right. So let's do Ben's first since he's here. So you want to put in a curb cut on your property on Lightning Ridge Road? Yeah. And there's no existing curb cut? There's been one for 25 plus years. So it means it's grandfather. So why do we? I don't know. I keep getting pointed to different people to get a permit for By it. By who? Uh, well, John suggested that I go to Alfred. And Alfred said it was okay, he's aware of it. Yeah. So I'm just well, trying to build a house on the property this year, so it's a change of use. I oh, guess it's a there's a camp, there's camp on the property. It's been used year round, I'm not sure. It used to be an agricultural road for logging. Oh, okay. So and that's now, the difference. And now they're building a, a, a house or a mm -hmm. uh -huh. shop. So it's a change of use. So it okay. Is, yeah. It's a legal access to the Okay, road. that's what I couldn't figure out is okay. why we're doing that's this it. if it was already existing. It's a change of use. Yeah. Okay. And I've looked at it, the site distance is fine, everything looks good. Do we, does it need a culvert? Um, I really I don't, don't think so. I, have one. I, I, don't, I don't think you can put one in. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ledge there, there, there and, and it drains into There's directions. no way to get a ditch anyways, so. The water's so never collected in the dip. Yeah. It goes somewhere. Okay, so I'm just trying to make a note so we can issue this. No culvert, yeah. drainage is okay. okay. And this is, okay, so uh, that was, I wasn't clear on. It's a change of use from agricultural to residential. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, and Alfred's looked at it. Anything else, Alfred? I think it's fine. Okay, so um, somebody want to make a motion to approve the curb cut as discussed? So moved. Second. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right, I'll pass this around for people to sign and I'll finish filling it out on my other time. So you're all set. Thank you for coming. See ya. All right, the next one is Tim. Was, do you know if Tim Howe is coming? I haven't talked to him. No, I talked to him early on about this and told him that he would need a right-of-way permit. Yeah, he wants to install a water line across the road, um, three-quarter three quarter inch line, four feet deep. We'll replace gravel with same, same and tamp and finish a small excavator will be used. And have you looked at it? Yeah. Okay, do you have I any know concerns? roughly where he's, where he's crossing. Yeah. And as long as he goes four feet deep, it's nothing we're going to have to worry about hitting when we ditch or anything. Ditch. Okay. The biggest thing is compaction and using the same gravel. Right, and you always you have to sign off on it when they're done, so you'll know whether yeah. or not they did. Yeah. Okay. So um, what I can write in here is exactly what he wrote: install a water line across the road, so on and so forth. And maybe just write in there that he needs to notify me the day that he does it. Oh, ahead of time? So that I can go off. verify, because if he puts it all in and doesn't compact it, I'm not going to be able to know that. You know, okay. Unless you're going to have a, you'll have a hump in the road. But all right, if so I you can want just him go to the job and see that he's got a compact or see what he's, what he's doing, then I'd feel better about signing off on it. Okay, notify you ahead of time so you can be on site on the day of the project. Yeah. So I think John's on my sign this yeah, after, done about after, after it's done. After oh, it's oh, done. oh, right. Okay. Yeah. okay. After. That's like signing off when the work is complete. All right. Yeah. Okay. I see. And it's the same thing with this one. Alfred would sign off after the work is done to make sure they did it right there. All right. All right. All right. Something every day. Okay. So would somebody like to make a motion to approve the Tim Howe right of way permit? So moved. Second. All right, I'll send this one around for signing and I'll fill it out as we dis as we discussed. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, next up. Um, guardrails on Jack Hill Moscow Woods project. 
And the way I understand it, as it was explained, I think by Alfred to, uh, to you and I, is that the grants only, um, when you get a grant, the only ones that they'll approve the price of is those shiny new ones because of safety rate ratings? Or, or recycled. The re they will do the recycled. They will recycled. Okay, good. Yeah. I wasn't sure about that. I so it's remember. not the real shiny. It's been weathered some, and it's, it's a little more of a dull color. Wait a second. You mean the kind without the galvanized? Well, no, it's galvanized, but it's been out, it's been used in the weather, so it's not as sharp, it's not as bright. So they're not allowing us to use the, the bare steel anymore? You're, you're talking about the core yeah, pen, the, the rusty? Thing? Yeah, the kind of, the, that's type of rust. Right, it's, rust. Doesn't, it's not approved for, for state projects. So if we want to use that, then we have to pay for it itself. And they don't also, they don't um, approve wooden ones because of the safety issue. Right. Well, our state? policy is to use the steel ones. Right, so the rusting the, ones. The, the bare steel, non-galvanized. It's ridiculous. It's, we don't put salt on the back of it. Yeah. Right. So that was the question that you had asked, is which ones do we want to use? And I think we want to use what our standard is, which is the the rusty ones, whatever okay. they're called. I don't know what they're called. They're core 10. 10. It's, it's the name of core 10, and it's, it's rusty rail. And it comes it's, already rusted, you mean? Yes. It's been dipped in an acid that... Oh, like a, so it has a patina. Yeah, it's brown. It's like rust color. It's, it's already well on its way to failure as the state looks at it. I'm just telling you what I hear from them. They're right. telling me that it's right. already right. on its way to failure. But fail if we there. want to use something else, we can. If you want to pay for it. Right. That's all. I mean, that's the only thing. We have to pay, but it's not included in the grant. Right. Yeah, right. We understand that. And we looked at the wooden steel back rail that we have on, in North Callis around the wall, and that is phenomenal money. And they want it's to like a dollar thirty something a foot versus fifteen dollars a foot. So it's to put wooden rail there is like fifty thousand dollars that we'd have to come up with. Wow. But if we use this core, core ten, core ten rusty rail. I can look into that certainly, and I, I didn't price that because I didn't. Right. You know, I was looking at between the the wooden rail and the galvanized rail was the two options that I looked mm -hmm. at. So I think we want to go with the core ten, the rusty rail. Okay. I, I didn't get a price for that, okay. so I, I, once again, it'll be it'll have to come out of our budget. Yep. Right. Uh, yeah. We understand we'll that. Included in the grant. Yeah. No, we understand that. That's our standard. We set a standard here. I don't right. know why we're debating this anymore. This is like... Well, because we, on, on other projects, we've used wooden rail and paid for it out of our hand, out of our pocket. This right. this particular job is a lot of rail. It's 200-something feet. That's a big number to right. put wooden rail. Right. So, no, I think... No, I'm not so, talking about so the iron. The iron wooden is not a sta our standard. The, the, the bare metal, core 10, whatever you call it, that's our standard in this town. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, like so, wait a minute. so we took, I'm not arguing with you, I'm just okay. trying to okay. understand. All right. We took out core 10 rail in North Callis and put wooden rail because that's what everybody wanted. Right. Everybody that was, was okay that was paying a, that extra money that was in a the wooden project. rail. Right. So that's why I looked into the wooden rail on this yeah. project, mm -hmm. discovered it's crazy money. Mm -hmm. So that's why I brought the question up. No, I, no, I have no problem with you bringing up the wood rail. That's right. great. You, I'm, I'm happy that you explore right. that, actually. I, I don't, I don't <coughs> think we should be debating whether it's galvanized or core 10. That's my Right. Thing. So you're going to check out the core It's good that you bring up that remind us of what we're yeah, at an expense and that it's not covered, but we shouldn't be. Right. No, I mean, I think. That's the standard. I, that was good that you <laughs> So bare so metal core 10. Core 10 is no matter what the cost is. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, we need to know what the cost is. That right now, that's it hasn't been out of control. I mean, the cost. It's, I think it was like double or something, but yeah, it wasn't just, 15 just, times. You could let us know what it is. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm, just, I'm just hearing that that's our only option. I so think that's what we're saying. Okay. So then we have to pay whatever it is. 
right. we would have to have the rail there. Right. We still want to, we still should we still, be informed as a difference, it's just so we know that whether this policy continues to make sense. I mean, obviously it's 15 times, we're gonna have to revisit it, right? Okay. Stephanie? Um, I'm interested to know 200 feet is a lot of guardrail. Where is the guardrail going to be? All along Jackson Road or also on Moscow Woods? It's, it's just yeah. on that section where the new culvert's going at the bottom of Jack Hill where it intersects with Moscow Woods. Yeah, so, yeah, right, we have to move the existing rail that's there mm -hmm. because we want to pull it up out of, off the bank mm -hmm. and try to straighten that corner up some. So therefore we have to bring that rail down around to meet the existing rail. So Which if we are, and again, if we are changing the, the rail, then we need to change the whole section. If we used just galvanized, secondhand galvanized steel, it would match what's there. We would only have to bring it back to to gain that radius, to meet the, the existing radius, which would cut down a, a lot of a lot of rail that we'd have to buy. Well, you can't you can't you splice. Can't, you, you can't. It would look very silly if you put ra uh, galvanized rail against this core ten. It would look absolutely ridiculous because it's so much different in color and, and, and all of that. So so I had, but we can here yeah. price it for doing the whole mm -hmm. doing the whole thing in one type of rail. And that's why the number is so big, it's two, over 200 feet. Yeah. Okay, all set on guardrails. Oh, Stephanie? Um, I wanna ask about something else about that contract. I got an email from Neil today, uh, the tree warden, and he said that, um, he said, Toby, I'm just gonna read it, it's not very long. Toby asked me to check out a tree they wanna put on Jack Hill Road really right near the intersection with Moscow Woods. It's a really cool, big old basswood on the downstream side, growing just north of the stream there, and it's in the way of their culvert replacement. It's probably one of those trees you appreciate every time you go by, but I can't avoid calling it a hazard tree. I started using a hazard tree assessment tool from the Forest Service, and the tree has a lot of woodpecker damage and internal decay, so it's mm. standard. Still, I don't think it's on death's door yet. I wanted to let you know to give you a chance to talk to Toby. I haven't had a chance. I don't know if there's a way to do their culvert replacement without harming it. In parentheses, it's practically growing on the old stone culvert there, but it might be worth exploring. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to Do we have to have a tree hearing for that? Uh, not, if, not, not if, if it's, it's a, if it, if it's a, a, hazard, a hazard, we don't have to do a tree hearing. No, we don't, because that's <coughs> what Neil's job is, is to right. go out there and look at it and decide whether it meets the criteria for a hazard tree. He's saying it does meet the, ha mm -hmm. the criteria, but just because it's a ha hazard tree doesn't mean it has to come down. So it, it's a hazard tree, why? It's a hazard tree, I guess. I don't but know why. Because it's decaying. Oh, I know. It's showing it's decaying decaying inside. Apart. There's woodpecker holes. Uh, yeah. there's, so that's proof that there's decay okay. in yeah. the okay. internal. Okay. So he's saying, yeah, it meets the standards mm -hmm. that he uses from the Forest Service as a hazard tree, but it's a beautiful tree and it's not on death's door. <coughs> so if there were a way around it, he's saying mm -hmm. it might be worth exploring. And I didn't have a yeah. chance to talk to him. I, I assume he didn't talk with Toby about, or you about. Well, I haven't talked to him, but I see, I've seen the email that he's that he yeah. um, But the really, because of the skew of the brook and where the brook is, to, once we dig that culvert out, it's going to destroy the roots, the, the old culvert, the old box culvert. I mean, it's going to destroy those roots. The roots are all growing into the rocks underneath, and <laughs> I just don't see that tree surviving because we can't move the brook. I mean, we just can't. The state's mm -hmm. not going to allow us to move the right. brook 10 right. feet away from this tree. Right. right. So that's why we, we had Neil go look at it yeah. and, and to see what we can do. I do think that we can save the yellow birch that's on the other side of the road. It would make it a lot more convenient if it wasn't there. But because of the distance that it has from the, from the mouth of the culvert, I think we can save it. So, that's kind of, I don't know if you can look at that as a kind of a compromise or what, but yeah. mm -hmm. um, the basswood tree, it is a beautiful tree. It's this big around, it's huge. Oh, oh my. But it is, it is showing signs and it's really very much in our way. To do and then if you do a bunch of work, that's gonna 
like I said, further completely. further make it a hazard tree because then the next storm you're going to destabilize all the roots. Yeah, that's and yeah. too bad. I mean, I'm sure those roots are all worked down into those stones, which is part of the culvert stone bridge. So you're just saying once you take the culvert out, the tree's going to go. Wow. Or it's going to damage the roots to a it, point where it's not going to survive. The tree's not going to survive anyway okay. if we pull that culvert out. Because, like I said, the roots are all within the, mm -hmm. the culvert or the bridge. They don't go anywhere else. They don't go anywhere else, too, or they wouldn't be disturbed. Oh, I'm sure. Well, tree roots go yeah. all directions, but yeah. but the main roots are going to be mm -hmm. inside of that, inside of those stones. Wow. It's amazing where roots can go. Yeah. Who would have thought? Oh, they do. They, oh, they yes. grow wow. and grow. Yeah. So what's no the idea. process that you're going to follow up? Are you going to just take the tree well, down? Well, the process is That's already actually. taking place. I mean, we've talked to the tree warden. He's you know, I mean, in terms of taking, you're going to, how does it work? You take the oh, tree down and... We'll cut it first, okay. cut it down first, and then the escalator... Whose property is it on? It's on Fair's property, and I've got a phone call into that. Yeah, because that technically belongs to them, that right, tree. Right, right. They want it. Um, it's no good for firewood. It's not? It's no good for fire. Huh. It's like what a paper. Do you, what do you use it for? Weaving baskets, if you're made of baskets, American. if you that's right. Or really? there's there you can do some log wood, some you can cut it into some. It's pretty, very pretty wood. When, Is it when you mill it? Hmm. Uh, so I don't know if, oh, but that would be the way it might be hollow. That would be, it might be hollow too. Yeah, right? it might be hollow. Right. Huh. So the, so back to the process. The process is that we we engage with the tree warden. Yeah, yeah. And he makes a ruling. And then which from now means, on, and then from here on out, what's the process? Uh, the process Actually, what are you going to do? We cut it, we cut it, yeah. and we ask the landowner if they want it and what they want to do with it. If they don't want it, we'll probably throw it over a bank somewhere just to get rid of it. Chip, when up, you cut chip it? the brush. When? You know, yeah, when? Um, not sure of that, but it, I, I've got more time on that project than I do have others, so I'm probably going to hold off on that one. Um, we have a bid, a pre bid meeting this Thursday for that job, so then we've got a week, or 10 day, I forget now the dates, but then, yeah, I think it's so 10 days. Like and then we choose, it's gonna be at least, least, be at least, least two weeks before we break down ground there, yeah. And this grant, this particular grant, doesn't have to be done by the end of June? No, Okay. this one, no, this, this one's is, got can go over to, this right. one is, we've got until, it's December, yeah. well we can't, we got until October, because we can't, October. we gotta be out of the brook. Yeah. Oh, right, but if yeah. you... So that's our deadline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Before. Okay. But what kind of culvert's going in there? It? It's uh, aluminum pipe arch, same mm -hmm. as what we put on your road. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's already ordered. It should be Great. here in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Do the same thing with the stream bed and walk going right through. Yeah, it's yeah, going to be buried. Awesome. It's going to be buried two feet. It's great. And uh, we haven't chose a, a contractor yet. That's coming next meeting. Mm -hmm. We'll have to get that on the agenda. Okay, good to know. Uh, <laughs> Might forget. Because the bids are due in a day or two before the meeting, and then we'll discuss it. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Choose a contractor. Bless you. Yeah, because we'll have that one, and the um, we've already got we got loose. Are we done with Jack Hill? Are you ready to move on? Okay. Because we've got some other projects. So the tree's gone. Yeah. Okay. And that'll be in the minutes. Phone starts ringing. Um, and we know and why. The fair is well, to be consulted. And what if the fair say we want to see that stay? Right. There's that great grandfather's tree right now with that tree. We might revisit that conversation. There's a possibility it would stay if they decided they, or they were to convince us that it's important to them. Yeah. Okay. I don't foresee that, but okay. I do have a phone call into them, and I'm sure they'll get back to yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yes, if they have a they have a problem, then we'll have to rediscuss it. And, yeah. and, right. And well, and maybe Neil can come out and Neil talk can, with them. Right. Neil right. Can, you know, it's great that actually. we have Neil for a tree warden. Yeah. It's really great. It is. It's great. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. He's great on the conservation commission. All right. So we talked about Jack Hill. Any other projects updated? I know we had this list. So is this we, the same thing you're looking at? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we are working on the grant to aid project right now. Which is, which is, just so everybody knows, the grant to aid project is the Pekin Brook Road, the berm removal. Right. 
it actually goes to any road, anywhere we can improve drainage and, and erosion. Mm -hmm. um, but we chose Pekin because there's a major berm down there, and, and uh, Dan Courier thought that would be a good one to, that would be yeah. eligible for the grant. So we're working on that as we speak. Uh, Sadie Foss culver, I've already ordered the culver. We'll put that in at some point this summer in between uh, more important deadlines that we have. And is that a grant, the Sadie Foss one? That is not. We. That's just on our own? Well, I have not had very much luck getting an answer out of AOT whether we're getting a grant for that. When oh. I talked to Shauna Clifford, she was not real sure that we were going to get it. So rather than waiting, I just ordered the culvert because either mm -hmm. way that, that I feel needs to be done. So we can do it out of our own budget uh, if we don't get the grant. And so I bought a culvert that would, that would satisfy the state's requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they do give us the grant, then we'll be reimbursed. Okay. And uh, then... Town Hill is, uh, I mean, not yeah, Town Hill, Town Hall Town is Hall. Uh, another project that's staring me in the face. Yeah. Uh, that's supposed to be in mid-August. Um, but John emailed me today and he's got a, I'm sorry, what? John McCullough emailed me okay. today and he's got a couple of little small digs that he needs me to do right away. Okay. Uh, so. If you see the excavator there, you'll know what it is. That's what it's, it's doing. Just, it's just oh, look, small. there's John McCullough. Yeah, just look at that. <laughs> Convenient that he's handy, huh? <laughs> okay, and then you've got East Callis Ditching. I had made East Callis Ditching, which is around the, the post office. Comes off the water that comes off the Baton Road, crosses Moscow Woods. And that's sort of tied into the whole gully problem with John Rissy and Beth McCullough and oh the um, erosion thing the erosion thing um, okay so but we need to do that ditching irregardless mm -hmm. it's uh, there's water getting down and carrying sediment and if I stone line the ditches it'll slow the water down so that should help help with the other issue help with the issue down below yeah right? okay which is heating up so it could be <laughs> no. You're a busy guy. Yes. Look at that yeah. list. Holy man. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a busy summer. Yeah. And then we have these other two projects that need to be done by the end of June. Right. So Woodbury Mountain Road is done. Oh, it is done. That is done. Well, wow, that was fast. Yeah. That was a two day, two days, and then we hauled gravel. Third and that was a grant? That was, that was the fourth class road That's thing, class right? That's grant. That's yeah. right. That's a pilot project. See, I'm learning. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> and that's good. Uh, so, good. and then we have Apple Hill, which we are starting right away. Right, which we did the tree warden hearing on that was the last tree week. Hearing. Yep. Right. Yeah. And I have hired JoJo Bain to <coughs> to go and take care of those trees for us. Okay. I met with him this morning and good local. Told him my urgency for getting it done. Because yeah. uh, after after the trees are gone, I've got a. It's going to take me a week, a week and a half to yeah. do, to do, to do that. that. Yeah. Project. Is he insured? Yeah. He is insured. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll have, that's a good point, though. I'll have to get a copy of that so I have it on hand. Yeah. But he, he is insured. I do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so that's pretty we, much the list that we've got. And then we have Loose and Bliss. Loose and bread Bliss, or those are just. Uh, small sections of road that we're going to do. Right. Well, Toby sent me this stuff and said this needs to be signed. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, those are grants that are coming yeah. through the, the Regional Planning Commission. This is Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah. It's uh, it's quite a list. Yeah, uh, you guys are going to be busy. Clearly, we've got grading that we're still doing in between. Mm -hmm. um, trying to get use use Ed where I can for the grading, but he's sort of limited as far as how many hours he can work. Right, because of his, because of his right. retirement and whatnot. Yeah. So I don't use him every day all week, um, and plus. 
him and his son are hanging, so it's like right. I gotta leave them alone a little bit. <laughs> uh, but I have been trying to use Dana also to yeah. keep him interested. And, and I think we've got a pretty good selection of people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. With Dana, it's a little bit tricky because of his schedule. Right. Because um, with his schedule, two two of his days are taken through the day, through the week, because mm -hmm. he works eight to eight. So. Yeah. Sometimes it falls on weekends. Sometimes, it? yes, right. March, and it's yeah. it's staggered throughout yeah. the whole, you yeah. know. So right. it's, I got to look at the calendar it's every week all the time. Can yeah. I use yeah. them or can I not? Right. And so. And we're not going to go over budget on salaries. Oh no. No. No, okay. we're in fine shape with that. Okay. Yeah. And you're starting to meet with Sandra about grants, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, I guess Toby's coming in tomorrow, and then I got to come in Wednesday and go over. Yeah. The, I think the it's going to be a lot easier f to keep track of things once we get them in the NEMREC system. Right. Right. There was some confusion. I had to pay pay some bill for one of the grants, which was a brand new grant, uh, and I didn't know how to label it. Yeah. So. And she didn't know either, um, because mm -hmm. it was a the, it was a uh, QuickBooks mm -hmm. uh, code. So oh, I see. She, you know, she didn't know if it was a new code or an old code. And mm -hmm. So Toby gave me, I think that's where this game came from. Was you know with the new code, and it made sense to her. So mm -hmm. that's, that we got over that hurdle. But once we switched to to Nemeric, right? So I'm told that right. it's going to be a lot easier. Yeah. Well, I've noticed, I mean, you've been doing a good job on labeling stuff in the orders. When I yeah. re, when I come in, I was in on, yeah, I've been coming in on Sundays to review orders prior to a select board meeting, so. Yeah. Yeah. So that process will continue forward when you're, when we're in Nemrick. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, I don't know that the codes are all going to change, or if they are. I think they are. They will. Okay. And Sandra, Sandra will help you out with right. that. So she'll give me the, yeah. the list of the codes. And um, Sandra's waiting to do her treasurer update too, so I don't want to keep her waiting too yeah. long. But can you tell us what's going on with the truck motor? I can. I have news. You have news? Oh my god, it's not great. And there's uh, a lot of options. Oh but, my. Uh, but we don't do well with lots of choices. You know this, don't you? <laughs> I do, but, <laughs> but I will say right off the bat is that we need to do something soon. Because we're getting along into the season where Right. If we are going to get a new truck, then it's going to take time to to get it ordered, get it fitted, fitted, yeah, all that. So that's my first comment. So my first actual transaction, legal transaction that I got from him, um, is that now who's Navistar, him? not J and B, J &B. J &B. the okay. owner of J and B is who I've been communicating with. So he's been trying to get an answer out of Navistar, right. which is the owner of International Trucks. Mm -hmm. They are now saying that they will give us $10,000 for two options. One, for towards a brand new motor, and two, towards a used motor. $10,000. But we have to buy an International. What, a, motor? A International truck. If we purchase a new truck, they'll give us $10,000 to fix our old truck. But I thought it was going to cost thirty-one thousand dollars to fix the old truck. I know. That's, oh, that's, that's part of the problem. Now the thirty-one thousand dollars is a brand new motor, mm -hmm. and J and B is going is offered to, to only charge us seventy-five dollars per hour to put the new motor in, which how which long is that? half price. I mean, they're usually one hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. Wow. Woo. Yeah. So, man. Um. So then I asked him, well, what's the truck going to be worth with a new motor versus a second-hand motor for trade-in? So a used motor, is the truck will be worth $35,000. Mm -hmm. A new motor will be worth, the truck will be worth $50,000. So a new motor is, cup will cost what? A new motor put in was thirty. So essentially, we're going to pay twenty for a new motor. If we buy, if we buy another truck, truck on top of this, right. if we buy, the, if the next truck we buy is from right. that same dealer, Navistar, mm -hmm. another, 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 another international, international, yes. And you said you didn't want to buy any more international. So I would rather not. Right. Way. But what do we? I mean, what do we do? 
I mean, they've kind of got us. Well, of course they do, because that's, and they know they do. That's why they're giving you this deal, because they know it. Because right now, the way the truck is, with the bad motor in there, right. it's only it? worth $8,500. Right. I got a price. That's with all the rig on it. So if we were to buy a used motor, have J&B put it in, they would still expect that we would buy an international, the next truck. If we took the 10 grand. Yeah. If we took the 10 grand. That doesn't grand. seem right to me. But, but here's a good thing. If we do go with international, which is not my favorite option, we can put a Cummins motor in there, mm -hmm. which we already have one truck with a Cummins and we've had no problems with it. Mm -hmm. In the new, in the new international. In the new international, if, if we, we go, we can't out, put one in. Can we, can't renovate. No. The you cannot no. renovate the existing. No, Jeez. no. That 2012, it was just, it's just a nightmare truck. Right. It's just we bought a lemon. So then a lot of other people. So it wasn't just. That's us. right. That's so. right. Um, so one way or another, we're going to take a hit here on this. I, yeah. I just don't see any way Gosh, of not. This is outrageous. Isn't it? You know, I, I despite them, I, I just they burned us for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars minus depreciation. It's I don't want to give that company another Rose. dime. Rose, Rose has something I'm, to say. No, I'm, well, I'm trying to figure this out. So, so we only would get the ten grand credit if we decided to buy a new international but would they still cut the shop rate to 75 yeah. an hour no matter what either either new motor or second hand motor. and is that jb or yeah jb J &B is giving us a break on the labor okay so that's the j and b break yeah right. and this other deal is right so mm -hmm. I, I haven't ironed that all out so the twenty thousand dollars i said we would be paying for the new motor might be less than that because mm -hmm. of the break in the in the hourly rate yeah so I haven't, I mean, I was talking to him on the phone and he, he emailed me this and mm -hmm. I said, I need to give the select board something. Mm -hmm. no, so this is what I make there's more ironing. There's more ironing out to do. Well, and I guess my question is too, um, if we buy the used motor and have that put in, we're looking to maybe replace that truck next year anyways, right? Or would we not? I would be afraid of getting rid of it now. Just get rid of it. I would. So if it's a, you know, it sounds like it's probably going to be a wash. We put the used motor in, we spend twenty some odd, twenty five thousand, say. Um, the truck's got eighty five hundred dollars in value now. Twenty five plus eighty five, it's like thirty three thousand dollars, and that's what we're going to get in trade. So it's not like we we take the ten thousand from them and we buy another international which is not what we want and you know we're not talking your or my budget we're talking a town budget and if we I think if we can avoid international we should I I love Western Star those yeah. two trucks that we yeah. have right now they are problem yeah. free they are they're a nice looking truck for who did you buy them from J and B oh you did yeah. Yeah. Western Star yeah. which we're not tied to that either. We can go to Charlie Boys. However, with Charlie Boys, they can't do warranty work in in Richmond or wherever they are. Yeah. They ha it has to go to that's Syracuse, right. New York, to their to their shop. Yeah. So that's why I didn't show didn't choose Charlie Boys the first time around. Thank you. Um, so we're you in, we're a bit, in a bit of a tough spot. Yeah, we are. I just got this today, so yeah, I so really have haven't. I mean, I think that. I think with the knowledge that I have right now, I think that the off the best option is to just put the used motor in there, let the thing set as much as we can, order a new motor, a new truck, and then we get what we can out of this. But is that going to cost us more, or is it is it going to be a wash, or are we going to make a little bit doing that? And order, not take the ten thousand. What do you mean order a new, a new truck right now, or after we'd have to do it after town meeting? Uh, or have a special meeting. Yeah, we have to have a special meeting. Well, is it, is it in our capital plan after July 1st to replace? It's, I think it's, it's in the plan. Next year. It's up for next we year. We're going to make it to the end. Right. But I just fear other problems with the truck. Oh, it's yeah, it's it not reliable at all. No. Yeah. So that's why I was saying buy the cheaper motor, Yeah. get out of it as cheap as you yeah. can, get the $35,000 as, as trade. trade, and put that towards the new truck. But then that means we have to buy another international. No, no, no. no. We're, no. He's Albert saying without the ten. Yeah. Don't take, the don't 10. take that don't ten. Take that. And then we can right. And then we can do what we want. 
Yeah. Right. I mean, that, that place is holding us hostage. Yeah, yeah, this. that's ridiculous. No, it's only $10,000. That's a drop in the bucket for a new truck. For a new truck, that's right. That's not, that's not much money. No, not at all. Um, but if you couple the, the, the discount and the labor <laughs> with that, then it's something. Right. So when this when this idea first hit me, I was like, okay, the town pays ten, Navistar pays ten, and J and B pays ten. Mm -hmm. Then we have a new motor, but we've still got an old truck that is is up anyways, and we've still got the same motor that we're having problems with. Right, right. Look, and, right. and we still that. got to find we need to find a motor with lower hours than the one we had. We know when they blow. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So if if. I don't know how many hour miles hours our, our truck had on it, but if we buy a motor, it's you know right. a few well, days away from the. Well, it would. It that's the that sour makes no part. sense. That's the sour part about this whole thing. That truck only had eighty-eight thousand miles on it. Yeah. Try that to find should a, go five hundred thousand. But try to find a motor for a twenty twelve with less than eighty-eight thousand at this late date, six years out. We may not be able to find one. I mean, it sounds to me. It sounds like I mean, maybe we gotta get the pencil out, but it sounds like it, we could put a used motor in it, and we're gonna invest enough money that it's gonna would be a wash if we took the eighty five hundred. That's we'd have eighty five hundred. We don't have to spend any more time on this, or we put a motor in for another twenty five thousand used, and we get wind up with the same in hand eighty five hundred. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to do anything to me it, if that's how it works out. We should just get rid of it. Just take, take it, and maybe will J and B give us a better deal on a um, what do you call that? What kind of star? Western, Western Star. Western Star. With knowing that the pain we went through, can they give us a wholesale price? Uh, yeah, and he's going to work on that. Also, I asked him to work on that. He couldn't give me a number mm -hmm. today on the phone, but he said he would have numbers like <coughs> tomorrow for a, for the a price of a new one, new Western Star yeah. or International. Okay, so. so he, I'm finally getting to him to move. Yeah, and yeah I've been good. pounding him yeah. about every yeah. day, trying to get some answers. Yep, I know and you have. finally, I've got an answer, and mm -hmm. it's in writing. So right, that's what I we feel want. like things are moving here now. Right. So what? So let me just see if I can paraphrase where where we're at. We're talking about buying a used motor to put in it, but not take the offer from Navistar. Mm -hmm. Just no. pay pay for it ourselves. And have J and B put it in, get a quote on a new truck, and hold a special town meeting. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, we need to see what the cost it says here. J and B will pull the old motor out of the truck for free, and only charge labor installing a new motor. So they have to find a low mileage motor, right? A lower mileage motor than what we had. Um, although a higher <laughs> mileage motor, will, we won't get thirty-five thousand. It says here we'll get less than that. So. We're going to need to find, and I don't know if they're, they're out there. Does he have one? He's got one. Oh, he has one. I don't know, I don't know the miles. I don't have yeah. the miles of this truck. Right. He's, cause he's he got still has some it more. It sounds like he doesn't know. He said if it was a higher mileage engine, but it sounds like I, and it says I'm, he wrote this. I will send over some quotes today. tomorrow on the new unit. So maybe between right. now and the next select board meeting, you'll have more information. So we can put this on for next. I mean, if it's a two thousand dollar difference, yeah, it's not worth your time. Okay. The waste of time is pull a piece of junk out of here and right. Well, and, and get working on a new truck and get him to move on a new truck price. Well, and maybe yeah, by next I'll select have board meeting. Tomorrow. I'll have the new truck price tomorrow. Okay. Um, but I'm just struggling with letting that truck go for eighty five hundred dollars. I know, but I, know. I mean, but, I, but if it's if, if it comes out to eighty five hundred anyway, after we put a motor in, what's the difference? You know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? Right, right. So if we so, can make a little money on it, then we should right, do that. But it's not going to cost twenty-five thousand to. Oh, it's not between a motor and the labor. For what? A used uh, one. If you used go with a used motor. Oh, really? If oh, you go okay. With a brand new motor, you're looking at twenty thousand out of your pocket. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. If we got a used one, we're looking at. Um. I would say you'd be more like eleven or twelve. But would we come out with more money in our pocket with the train motor going in on a resale? Well, yes, because grand. if you put a new motor in, yes, it costs you more money, but right. you're going to get more money for the train. No, we should do whatever you're makes us more money. It. We should do right or not? Uh, yeah, 
but we still need to get rid of this truck. Right. Right. And get rid of right. And get rid of the truck. Trade to death with this truck. Right. And then right. trade it. Don't we don't drive it home. Right. We leave it there. Yeah. Put the and new motor in and leave it. And maybe. Maybe we don't even deal with this. Maybe we work a trade a deal right now. We we give we say we're going to commit to putting a new motor in it. We'll pay for it, and then we need to, that to be part of part of your figured into your price on the the um, on the new one, which I'll know one. tomorrow. Yeah, I'll know that will finished yeah. tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, uh, and then I can decide from there. Okay. A little better as far as what to do with the. So maybe you're going to be looking to the select board to help finalize a decision on the 25th. When we meet again. Well, yeah. I mean, I think what the select board needs to do is figure out if we if we are buying into the truck or not. Right, and I think that's going to depend on what you find out between now and the next meeting, which you might have everything tomorrow, but we don't meet again until the twenty fifth. Right. So. So when he says, "I called a wholesaler, uh, Bill Clearly, Cleary, yeah. J and B. I called a wholesaler, and he." Uh, that purchases town equipment, he would value your truck with a new engine at fifty thousand today. That doesn't necessarily mean that JB would pay us fifty thousand trade. It means that we have to sell it on our own, and like the auto trader, or would he take? Uh, no, or would he no, give us that much? Means, that means that this wholesaler will buy that truck for fifty. Oh, he will buy that. Yes. For fifty thousand. Oh. Yeah. He bought. Now he buys all of JB JB's secondhand oh, okay. truck. Oh, okay. He's down in New York. So fifty thousand is a nice truck. price towards a new truck. That's with a new so engine, and then the next paragraph it says if it had a used engine, it would be worth thirty-five. Yeah. Right, with like mileage, but it might be yeah. harder to sell something. Yeah. This yeah. truck is going to be hard to sell no matter Even what. With Everybody engine. knows about this 2012. Right. And it's that's a wholesale. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure he knows about it too, but that's why. Otherwise, that truck, those numbers would be a lot higher. Right. If that was, if that was, yeah. you know, an older international truck, those numbers would be a lot higher, wow. because it's just because between 2000 and not 2009 and 2012, yeah, they started making those junk motors without the urea, and that's where they went back. Right. Those motors are just problems. They just. Wow. Okay, so the plan is. That we're gonna, it sounds to me like the plan is to put a new motor in it. If, by, the, if the math works. If the math works, right, you still have to get, some, to get some more figures. Get a quote on a new Western Star, am I saying, is that the right one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come back to the select board on the 25th with the numbers and recommendations, and then if we decide we want to buy a new truck, we'll have to hold a special town meeting. And part of the purchase of us buying a new Western Star from this guy at hopefully a better price than normal would be that he also needs to take to give us the trade at fifty grand. Yeah. With with the new motor. Yeah. 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 That's part of this the transaction for a new truck. Right. So yeah, I mean you can't pull any wool over my eyes because I, I can I know what I can buy a Western Star from Charlie Boys. Right. right. Mm -hmm. right. So I know what a cabin chassis goes for. Yep. Yeah. So he can't, you know, right. say, okay, well, I need 130 for the cabin chassis, but yeah. I can buy it for 115. Mm -hmm. um, so right. I, I'm on this. I just, I just right. barely, literally got this. Yeah, this right. Well, yeah, yeah. No, you, you digest it. You've good. done a really good job. Well, yeah. Nice work. On something. That's good. Nice, nice well, detective and negotiating skills. Thank you sticking up with that. Yeah. Well, it's it's my money too. Right, so your tax dollars too. I pay too. a lot of tax in this town, and I look, tend to look out for it. And yeah. that's what I'm doing here. Yeah. I plus, you need, need a truck to drive. I just, plus, right. I need a truck to do my job. That's right. <laughs> kind of. Okay, anything else so we can move on? I'm going to see if everybody, if nobody minds if we, Pat Johnson is here, who broke her ankle. She, you, do you have anything else, Alfred? No, I think I'm good. You all set? Okay. I think so. All right. Um, so your the proposal is to appoint a defective yeah. conservation commission? Yeah, though? yeah. An injured conservation commission. We've got a broken commission. truck and a broken conservation commission. I know. Oh, it's starting. It better not come in threes. Right. Kind of, yeah, what else is broken? You're going to tell something bad, dear? Oh, so, no. So I just, I broken just, town hall, maybe? I, it's kind of taking things out of order, but I think this will take like three minutes. I appreciate that. That's so you can get back home and put your foot up. Thanks. So I met Pat at a conservation commission meeting recently. She lives on Lightning Ridge. Of course she does. Rose knows her. Sure. Was, 
Yeah. yeah. Stephanie knows her. Whereabouts? Um, I am down about a quarter half mile. I'm next to Rick Winston. Oh, okay. Right across from Ben. With the beautiful oh, flowers. Okay. The beautiful flowers. Oh, that's you. Yeah, that's actually my husband, Dennis. Oh. He's the amazing I was gonna say, gardener. Uh, I'm not the gardener. My husband's the gardener. Oh so. my gosh, yeah. I'm the admirer. Yeah, me too. Pull the occasional weed. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So um, Pat's willing to serve on the Conservation Commission. Excellent. Yeah. And she would slot into, I'm trying to think whose position. They had a couple of vacancies and didn't have them filled. And then they had, I should have written this down ahead of time, Conservation Commission. So we have, um, well, they both, Lou Cherry and Richard Maisel, their terms expired in 2018, and I believe they're in their four-year terms. So um, I would like to make a motion that we appoint Pat Johnson to fill one of the vacant conservation. No, too sadly, I'm sorry, he's not. To fill um, one of the vacant positions with the term expiring. Four years from 18 is what, 2020? 2022. 2022. Wow. Wow, is right. Yeah. <laughs> that far ahead. yeah. <laughs> so we thank you very much for your willingness to serve. We I'll second that. Great, thanks. All yeah, those thank in favor, please say aye. 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 Well, thank Great. you. Thank, thank you. you. I need to guess names so I know. Oh, I'm sorry. It's OK. Denise Wheeler. Yeah, hi, Denise. OK, I'm Rose. John Bregan. John, OK. I think you were at the, we were the, Last conservation commission. No, I'll be at, I'll be at the conservation Tomorrow night will be there. Tomorrow, tomorrow okay, night. yeah, I'm really interested in that. Yeah. And Cliff Emmons. Cliff, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And Katie. Katie. Great. She takes the minutes for conservation as well. Okay, okay. Yeah, great, okay. All right, thank you. Okay, good. Thanks, Pat. Sandra. Sandra, 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 Wonderful. Yeah. Good. Nice to see you. Nice Say hi to Dennis. I will. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Thanks. You need any help? Good. Good evening. Thank you too. Thank you. Did Stephanie leave? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Her was calling too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Sandra, take it away. Hello. So I'm sorry to make you wait, but it's the nature of the beast. That's right, I have things to do. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few. So, um, how do you? We wanted to talk about, I think the first thing we should talk about is the audit for FY17 and 18. You've contacted Sullivan and Powers? Correct. Mm -hmm. I followed up on um, what uh, Donna had previously initiated for on um, behalf of the select board. And um, she had obtained a bid from Sullivan and Powers. Mm -hmm. I have spoken with Fred Duplessis recently to confirm uh, their interest and ability to audit the town. They have made a proposal, a three-year proposal, FY17 and 18, they can audit for 14,500 each year and FY19 for 14,900. We budgeted in FY19 14,000 for the audit, uh, and since I, I believe that 14,000 was based on a conversation had almost a year ago, according to Fred, he was looking at his mm -hmm. notes. So uh, there was an increase based on probably the passage of time. Uh, and can they do have availability to do our audits? Um, it was uh, the legal opinion of Jim Barlow that we were able to uh, forego an audit of FY16. It was the opinion of Fred Duplessis that because FY16 was so remote in time that the information that would be obtained was not as valuable as, as, as 
if we started with audits of 17 and going forward. Um, so now this is what, also converting to a cash? Correct. Modified cash. Modified correct. Cash. So um, Brent's recommendation was that the town go from an accrual basis, a modified accrual basis, to a modified cash basis. The audit proposal reflected the ease of an audit on a modified cash basis. Uh, so his recommendation was based on three prongs. One, uh, the audit is less expensive. Two, uh, the ease of administration of a cash basis accounting uh, practice was easier administratively. Mm -hmm. And three, that the reporting is much more clear and he felt that the select board would have an ease of you know, understanding the financial reports as opposed to an accrual basis. Uh, I, have been, I have been working with your accrual basis. I, uh, accounting, I don't have any trouble with it. I worked on a cash basis in the town of Worcester for eight years. Um, I, I was also, as the treasurer there, the town was audited by Sullivan and Powers. I, I like a cash basis. I think that um, as the, a town the size is not going to be GASB compliant, um, that would require practices that are not cost effective for the town. For instance, having all of the town highways and buildings appraised and depreciated. It's, it's a very expensive process. Having our pension plan uh, evaluated on an actuarial basis every year. So um, these are some of the elements of being GASB compliant. Uh, Fred's comment to me was your, a town your size is not going to be GASB compliant. There's no real reason to uh, have an accounting um, process that relies on an accrual basis. And then went on to say, and these are the benefits mm -hmm. of a cash basis. And NEMRIC conversion on a cash basis, there's no problem with that? No, I contacted NEMRIC. We're in the process of designing the um, chart of accounts and no material changes needed to be made to reflect a cash basis. In fact, I mean, if we were going to do it, this is the ideal time. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation to the board would be to follow the recommendation of Fred Duplessis and, um, and, Jim. and for a cash basis mm -hmm. audit and to begin your audit years on FY17 and 18. Uh, he included 19, so he gave us a deal for three years. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a great idea. I also uh, recommend that we really budget for an annual audit. I think yeah. that we have uh, large projects going forward, mm -hmm. particularly the town hall project. And uh, the select board would be, it would really be a handy tool for the select board mm -hmm. to you know, keep their fingers on the pulse well, of the finances of the yeah. town. So I think I agree, and I would like to see us do an annual audit. I think it, it makes prudent sense, you know, fiscally going forward for loans, you know, whatever. I think it's always, it would be wise for the town to do an annual audit. And with a price that we can budget in, I think it makes perfect sense. Um, it's just, and there's it's just, a lot of turnover. Man, there's a lot of turnover right, in this good, office of it's just the good, last few years. Right, it's good management. To our longer history. Yeah, so it's I think just it's, good management practice. It is smart to do. Uh, one thing of note, we can uh, we can proceed to the 18 audit immediate FY18 audit immediately following the FY17 audit. We mm -hmm. do have the room in our budget. Because of a certain employee turnover, there are unexpended funds that are available and will cover the FY18 cost of audit. So we've right. looked into that. You do have the money. Uh, I spoke with Fred, and he can begin the FY17 audit uh, the 20th and 21st of June. Hmm. That uh, will allow, allow us to reach into FY18 budget monies. We do have some unex uh, we do have uh, a few thousand dollars of unexpended monies that we can apply to the work done in 
FY18 to close for out. the close FY17 out. audit. So that also releases mm -hmm. money to pay for the FY18 audit which was budgeted for in mm -hmm. FY19. Oh, you guys are following me so <laughs> well. <laughs> I am following you. You I are following me. I absolutely am. So um, I um, hope the board would give some consideration to this and uh, and move on it. I think it's a great mm -hmm. idea. I think it's a good opportunity to get caught up, get on a regular auditing basis. I think it's good, 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 good management practice for the town. So just for point of clarification, do we still have auditors, like do we still have an auditor or are we going to need an auditor or, or, or we don't if we get an annual audit? We still, the charter says, and I don't have it in front of me, that the town could, would appoint an auditor and have an audit, an official audit audit, every three years. Yeah. Currently, we don't have an auditor per se. We have Father Gil Savalli, Melanie and Renee. Yeah. yeah. And going forward, and this is something that's going to come up, is that because of what I'm doing, and we hope that in the future, Barbara Butler, the assistant town clerk, will be able to do the reconciliation of the checkbook. What I'm doing with the, the warrants, I don't know who, who was it, was it Fred or was it somebody else said that that kind of covers an auditor, an auditor right? The functions. Well, the functions. I think, I think yeah. that from, we have two questions here. We have what fulfills the auditing requirement as imposed by the town charter, and that's a legal determination, and then what fulfills the internal controls uh, to get us a good, a good audit, uh, a, a good governmental audit. So, from the auditing standpoint, we are beginning to put in place the internal controls that um, auditors are looking for. In particular, a segregation of powers, so that I am not reviewing my own work. Right. every single month. Well, and wasn't the idea too that the Renee or I guess Melanie is going to be leaving, but that they would kind of fulfill that role as the auditor? Well, I was hoping that would happen and we have not firmed that up at this point in time. With I, them, you mean? Yes. I want to see what we really are looking at in terms of internal controls. What is Sullivan and Powers going to recommend? Mm -hmm. how, how we can fulfill that and how then can we merge those requirements, the auditing requirements, mm -hmm. with the requirement of the town charter. Right. And um, so that is yet to be So that's to be worked out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what do you need? Is that answer your question, Rose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't, that, that is still a little nebulous, but right now we really do have at least two auditors looking over my shoulder. They're not recon reconciling my accounts. They're not checking on checks, you know, is every check accounted for, uh, but they are looking over how things are being posted and we are formulating final balances of the various accounts so that we can move opening balances into the Nimrix system. So, we, you know. Excellent. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of moving on. pieces right now. Yeah. Yeah, there's a ton of moving pieces. I'm taking up all the space, John. I'm sorry. No, I'm taking up we, all the space. We may oh. actually <laughs> only need an auditor, town auditor. Uh, if we have good internal controls covered in in house, we may only need an actual auditor as required by the town charter, maybe once a quarter to come mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe FSB will send someone mm -hmm. in to fulfill that purpose. The town charter does not say how often an auditor needs to come in. Right. And, so we have um, a little wiggle room there. I think. Yeah. I, didn't, I don't think we even thought about it at the time we were drafting the charter. I don't even think we... Well, that was good because you yeah. yourself. Right. It, it can be wide open and mostly what we're after are a, is a very positive audit that right. that sees that we are fulfilling internal controls again a separation of segregation of duties, duties. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so Excellent. what do you need us do you need us to make a motion and approve the um, 
contract. The contract with Sullivan and Powers? Yes. And do we need to sign anything? Yes, the contract. The contract is a mul is you know a multi-page. Yeah, I, I is did. Three-year contract. I didn't read it word for word, but it's it is a really standard fare mm -hmm. <laughs> for um, audits. Five years. It's a three-year contract. Three-year. So the documentation, uh, documentation is for five years, but yeah. it's a three-year contract. Okay. Yeah. Right, and you know. What Fred says is, if, if you decide not to do the 2019, you know, that they would let us out of it. But I think I think that we just need the board, to get on a regular yeah, schedule. Yeah, the board might really want to stay on right. the schedule and and continue with this. It's if all goes well. There's no reason to change. But right. You know, it, sometimes yeah. Things don't go as planned. Right. 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 I mean, we can just try our best to. Keep on a regular audit schedule and all right so would somebody like to make a motion or would my motion like to be seconded um, i'll second your motion yeah i made a motion that we approve the contract oh sullivan and powers okay then you oh for, the, uh, for uh for cash basis audit for cash right. basis audit right. to do the audit for fy 17 18 and 19 as described in the letter of the proposal provided by Sullivan and Powers dated June 5. Can we authorize you to sign on behalf of the select group? It's actually scope of services. Is that what it's called? Scope yeah. of services. Proposal. Yeah. Um, I think we can all just sign it. There's enough spaces. Well, somebody will have to write beneath a line. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so that's the motion. Is everybody in agreement? Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? More questions? No. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, I'll pass this around. There's only three lines, but somebody can sign below a line. And there's two copies that we signed. All right, well, we're signing that. Do you want to talk to us about the blanket authority to close various bank accounts and why that's needed? As we're moving into our um, transition into our Nimerick accounting system and also closing out FY18, uh, Melanie, uh, formerly of Father Bill and Zagali, now on her own, but while she was with Father Bill and Zagali and advising the town on its financial um, procedures, recommended that we close all ancillary accounts. And um, we have not identified exactly which, I'm sorry, what those accounts will be, but um, we will determine that, uh, Melanie, yours. myself, and Renee, from who is at, currently with Bongo and Sigali. Uh, the purpose of that is that accountants hate a lot of accounts. It's as simple as that. In Worcester, they also asked us to close accounts that were not, that they did not deem necessary. The reason we can do that with safety is that uh, QuickBooks, but in particular Nimric, can do fund accounting so we can keep track of all the money that was otherwise in those accounts. The cemetery funds would remain segregated. The swim funds would remain segregated. Um, but there are, there's a, the general surplus account that those monies really can be rolled into the um, operating account they're not operating funds but they would simply be in one place in one place she did recommend we maintain a money market account uh, just have one checking account one mark money market account and then the cemetery funds and the swim funds so, um, so we'd be cutting it down to four and the highway would be well, the highway is is just part of the yeah, operating, operating okay. account, right? We right, and you keep track. You just keep track off. of it in Nimrick, So Right. Uh, the surety account, I think, uh, frankly, uh, needs to be separate. We're earning interest for that, and that really is the not surety account, the escrow. You mm -hmm. mean from the McCullough? So I would uh, I would maybe reach out to Jim on that one and mm -hmm. talk to Father Gillen Zagali. I'm not sure that we really should consolidate that. 
we're also holding right because we, I think we need to just I think that needs to be separate. I, I think it yeah. probably make does. it as its own interest. It's its own thing. Yeah. yeah. We also are holding tax proceeds from the two tax sales, and those clearly need to be separated from town funds. That's uh, there's not a statute on it, but that is the recommendation of Gloria Rice. And mm -hmm. if you read the the basic statute, it, you certainly it's it's inferred if not specifically stated. So uh, those funds must generate interest, and um, and they have to be separate. They they need to be separate. Yeah. Gloria Rice. Uh, yeah. recommended that and that's they will not be consolidated so the consolidation effort really is not a big deal I think we have one account to fold in um, mm -hmm. but this is this is not this isn't the first time I've heard this okay. so we will I will give so you that plan you, I just need an authorization need a motion for that. Mm -hmm. okay so I'll make a motion to give town treasurer Sandra Fervor the blanket authority to close various bank accounts as needed. As needed. Does that do it? That does it. I'll okay. second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, town hall. You want to? Want to? Maybe you want to do Nemric. I should have put this different. Nemric. Just give us a quick update on Nemric, and then we can do town hall because that'll lead into. The further discussion. So the Nimrick transition is progressing nicely. Uh, the accounts payable module is loaded. Our vendors are all in. Um, payroll is loaded. Our current, all the employees that we have, uh, appointees and elected officials are all loaded. Um, benefits are loaded. So other than transferring year-to-date payroll information from QuickBooks into Nimric, that module is put together. I will review each employee, elected and appointed official, uh, individually just to make sure everything is, is tidy. The transfer of year-to-date information will take place on June 29th. We will pull the information uh, at because that's our last payroll. Um, that would be our last bi-weekly payroll. We will have that year-to-date information off of QuickBooks, and from that report, we will manually input each employee's information. Into NEMREC. Into NEMREC. The idea being that the system will be loaded and ready to uh, run its first payroll on July 6th, which mm -hmm. is the first weekly wow. payroll of FY19. Right. So right. that is the plan. NEMREC will be available remotely, or she'll come in and Renee at Father Gail and Zagali, who uh, is in charge of the payroll module that we use there. She is also uh, online for us that day. So that will be work. a Friday. So nice work. This go. is exciting. It is yes. exciting. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's the work is exciting. Yeah. Our um, chart of accounts is constantly under construction and refinement. Our high, highway operations manager had asked for a couple of changes, and uh, in particular for more detail. So he's looking for a detail on uh, repairs and equipments per vehicle, and also um, on loan and interest payments mm -hmm. per vehicle. So currently, you have one equipment and repair line item. They've asked for that to be broken out. The real work is for them, whether it's keyed in on one number or 10 numbers, uh, it still has to be keyed in one way or another. Mm -hmm. So that's, it, it just gives you more information. And the loan payments currently are under one line item as well. And uh, really for good accounting purposes, we'll break that up into interest and principal per loan payment. Right. And that gives, I think, uh, I think that gives a lot of information that will be valuable. Absolutely. So we made that change. Um, 
this week, Hanimerk will be in on Wednesday. The purpose of their meeting uh, with me and our operations manager, Toby, and Alfred, um, our road commissioner, is to set forth how best to use Nimric to keep track of highway grants and, in fact, of all grants. Mm -hmm. uh, in preparation for that, Toby's coming in tomorrow. He has a list of grants that will be um, ongoing or initiated in FY19 and also a list of grants that we will um, be receiving payments on that uh, for all intents and purposes the, the expenditures have been submitted and we're waiting on payments. We need a place to put them in NIMRIC. So uh, what NIMRIC will talk about is how to read a grant agreement it, it, and how to then set it up. Each grant as, sh as, sh as it will be set up will basically have a mini budget. It will have a revenue line for receivables Perfect. and it will have, you know, labor equipment, Expenses. materials, yeah. and that's So we can get a thing. ring. But we want to print out on a specific grant project to see how much it cost or why it went over. We'll be able to do that in Nemrec. You will. Also, your highway grants will effectively be netted at the close of every fiscal year. So whether you're in the black or in the red, hopefully it's always in the black. Right. Um, but maybe sometimes in the red because you'll be in progress. Some of these grants will straddle fiscal right. years. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yep. you, <laughs> will, you will have a better ability to know where you are in the highway grant mm -hmm. um, world. Likewise, the highway fund will carry forward its own uh, fund balance. Right. And this will so, also apply to all all these other grants that we have too, like the reader grant and right, the general the, the just, grants just general government grants will, so will can also a, live in their own uh, world and they will be netted out uh, at the close of every fiscal year. We are also going to create uh, a town hall project um, grant. Yeah, world. we have historic preservation grants. Um, the town hall project is so big that that will live on its own. But the historic preservation grants, I think, will just go in with general government grants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so they will all net out. Uh, the purpose of the high, uh, the town hall grant really is to allow you folks to keep an eyeball on uh, where we are at any point right, in the, time. The grant is different than the loan, obviously. Mm -hmm. There, as I understand it, there will be various grants that will be uh, right, well, applied for right. as well yep. as the loan. Yep. And so you're going to be the keeper of the grants going forward? Well, I'm not going to be the person to write for grants, right. and I'm not going to be the person who will be sending in grant receipts right. for no, reimbursement. You're going to manage. Yes. I, right. I, I will be the person who will keep copies of, of all, all of the invoices. invoices and the payment records, and I will be inputting that information into NIMRIC. Right. I will essentially have my own grant file, mm -hmm. uh, redundancy, at, at, actually as is rec is recommended right. in a situation like this, um, because in the event of an audit, you really, um, you can't have the person, we would want to avoid the person being audited having to say, I just don't know. I wasn't here at that time. Mm -hmm. So same thing with highway grants. Mm -hmm. we, we, I would have an internal file, and highway should have right. their own files. I know Alfred keeps track of that. Mm -hmm. And they do. They do yeah. a great job. Uh, Toby has uh, done a great job of the spreadsheet. Uh, I think we finally communicated how I need to organize his information. Mm -hmm. He works. Everybody's mind works differently. Mm -hmm. We have I found a great spreadsheet that. I think we'll pinpoint the information I need. What time is he coming in tomorrow? He hasn't said yet. He will get back to me. Okay. But he has committed that day. So or I think we wouldn't need more than an hour and an hour and a half yeah. for that. Alfred is very interested. He's not here. Alfred is very interested in what's going on, and uh, he will be attending too because he oftentimes keys in grant information. We did have a stream permit that Alfred was talking with you about earlier, and I simply added a grant to uh, our existing QuickBooks list because we have to write that expense out of it. Mm -hmm. 
and set up the file. And so we know the Nimric number and Nimric will give it a Nimric number and we will be able to yeah. move these things forward. Perfect. Wonderful. All right, awesome. town hall loan. Town hall loans. I went out to bid on three loans. Uh, only two came back. Um, so we're kind of betwixt and between right now. Did the other one not get back to you? They did not. They did not Which respond. Was that? It was uh, People's Bank. Isn't that the one we use? No. Oh, we uh, use merchants. We use merchants. Uh, formerly merchants, currently community, not, uh, community bank NA. Oh, okay. Merchants is now known as Community Bank NA. Forgive me if I say Community National Bank. They're so close. Yeah. Um, it don't. might be easier for our conversation if we just say merchants and know at the front that it yeah. is actually known as Community Bank NA. Yeah. Katie can put that in the minutes. Merchants are the name of the known the, as. Right. Uh, right. I'm afraid I will. Uh, for purposes of recording, I'm, uh, I'm afraid I'm going to say Community National Bank. For some reason, that runs off. Yeah, that comes out easier, and that would be uh, confusing. Yeah. So, so, so Cliff and I had met with Sandra and asked her to get some figures, hopefully for our discussion tonight, so we can go in and apply for the loan. So, Pasumsic um, Bank is uh, is now uh, recruiting, or uh, yes, is recruiting governments into their government. Uh, division and they have offered offer, offered us a loan at 2.74 percent fixed for five years for the two hundred thousand uh, dollars I spoke with Danny Lane today initially they were looking for audits and so I'm just going to rewind and say every bank I contacted was looking for your last two or three audits and yeah. Um, yeah. I had some reservations about whether or not we were going to be successful in making this loan happen because we just simply don't have that information nor would we have it in time we just simply wouldn't have it and and the time frame would not be relevant to what the town hall committee is hoping to accomplish in the near future so in speaking with uh, Danny Lane, I, um, he, they were willing to waive the audit requirements in favor of our town reports and financial mm. QuickBooks statements of the balance sheet profit and loss. Right. What they did want to do was subject the loan to a con other, you know, other contingencies, and one of which is that we uh, that they hold our primary operating account, which is currently with merchants. Um, that would seem to be a no-brainer, but that actually, uh, well, I think we, we'd like to talk about that. I, I do have an opinion on that. Uh, so keep that in mind, that 2.74% fixed for five years yep. for the full 200000 uh, Community Bank Merchants has offered us a loan, again, for $200,000 at 3.71%. Uh, they uh, prepaid. And they, are, and they are our bank. They are our bank. They also wanted audits, and um, I spoke with her at length. Both of these people I needed to speak with at length because this process needs to move, and we can't. My concern is that the select board would make the time and effort to select a bank, and then we could not meet underwriting requirements, and we would be another month out. And as I understand the um, cash flow needs here, that could be prejudicial to the project and to accomplishing what needs to happen mm -hmm. when the weather is good. So I was, um, so I pursued that, and uh, we're going to be able to do without our audit. But you know, merchants was that they they was going to be agreeable with that. Um, and so I, I they agreed to it. They did agree, agree to, agree to agree go, to it. you know, that they understood. The conditions as well. We understood, they understood we did not have audits and supported this loan. The okay. end that we could go, we could go forward and if we accept, if, if we accepted their bid, they would not then respond by saying, 
we withdraw the bid because you don't have audits. That's that You're was my saying concern. bid or these are inquiries, right? Well, these are written. This is what we will do. If oh. You may select one of mm -hmm. these. Okay. Okay. So what what does it mean to what would it mean to switch everything from one bank to another? Well, because it ordinarily might not be a big deal, <laughs> but we're in a, I am transitioning into Nemeric. That is really heating up into fourth to fifth gear. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of faith in the merchants folks. I have dealt with them for years and years. They have a lot of history behind them. When they write an offer, they set it all out for you. Uh -huh. This is this is their bid, the real deal, which they will have all of your loan paperwork. That's who we do. By the twenty fifth, you have everything with them now. This is this is Pasumsic Bank's offer. <laughs> but where is that bank? Well, it's in uh, St. John's Ferry. Now, sooner than later, they are going to have a branch in the Berlin Mall. Oh, really? So that is really the only thing that I, I mean, I have to say that would be convenient. Both of these um, banks are in Berlin. I live in Berlin. I, that I go to the bank, off, you know, sometimes once a week and during tax time it would be more frequent. So mm -hmm. it would not be an inconvenience. But certainly mailing in deposits initially is not a good idea. I, I, yeah. I walk my deposits and I always have because the banks now use electronic readers, mm -hmm. which do not always capture numbers correctly. Mm -hmm. And you can't easily go back to a taxpayer who wrote a five that looks like a nine, or a nine no. that looks like a five, yeah. and say, you owe us five dollars because the bank misread your check. Right. It doesn't, it just doesn't, oh, it could work is, like is that, it, but it's difficult. Is it inappropriate to ask community bank to match for some sick? Well, you mean merchants? Or it's community. It's community. It's community. It's community. It's community. Okay. Uh, my thought to the select board is I'd like to go back to community bank. Mm -hmm. I'd like to tell them that, well, that we have $338,000 in a money market account in TD Bank. And would they consider matching um, Pasumsic? If we were to mm -hmm. bring all of our money and over let, there, or at least come ahead, closer, yeah. so and, and let them know that some said they want our business and that and that we the select board is considering right because we're so considering moving all of our business over there just right because this loan rate is so darn good right and now what is one could somebody I'm beyond being able to compute it what is that one percent on two hundred thousand dollars because it's darn close to a one percent spread it's right. a little bit less oh yes it is less it's a point zero seven percent difference on two hundred thousand dollars what is that 14 John's gonna do it on his computer I'm gonna pass it to Sandy it's not fourteen thousand it's what well, seven, seven times four is fourteen. Seven times two is 14. seven times two. I mean, yeah. I'll plug in the numbers there and a the calculator. And... It's not fair. She hasn't seen that computer before. Oh, I can wait. She can do it. anything. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they all say. Katie, can you could do a com calculator? She's got it. I can though. I can pull it up next. Time. <laughs> it's it. the race. <laughs> interest rate is I mean even if they were to come in close to the subset I think yeah. that's what I'm hoping um, or I lower would be even better if we move that TD bank mm -hmm. thing over oh there we go oh I need a term five years um, it it would be What we really want is what we pay in the end. <sighs> right. Total 60 monthly, total, 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 total interest paid. 14 to 40, 61 is total interest paid on that. 14 to 40. Mm -hmm. 
So that's that's a quite a bit of money. Well, and that is two point seven four, and now we're going to go to three point seven one. About fourteen thousand dollars for the first it's, year. It would be total interest yeah. paid would be nineteen thousand four hundred and thirty one dollars. Nineteen thousand four hundred and thirty one. So five thousand dollars is not a small amount, but administratively to we, switch everything to over. To switch everything over and the switch over is is uh, complicated. It's not complicated. Nothing is complicated. The switch over would um, require an identification of all outstanding checks. It would require moving money into an account to cover new checks that we're going to write mm -hmm. so that so that we can write checks while we hold back money for existing checks to come in. Mm -hmm. uh, it would require contacting the federal government, that's the hard one, and the state of Vermont to uh, alert them that their automatic transfers are going to be coming into the town because they pay recording fees directly into our bank account. And then the federal government is the one that's going to lag behind uh, yeah, so more than anything. Uh, our, we also have automatic transfers coming out. That would be consult, um, our phone, what? let's just say All utilities. Those, yes, they're all right there on that list. Correct. Also, our tax payments are swept. So there are uh, too much. There is a lot. There are enough in and outs of our account that are done electronically and automatically that that would be tricky mm -hmm. to manage. So, yeah. and it would it would be. So I'm just saying from my standpoint, that would add an additional layer. Right. I am hoping, with your permission, that I would be successful in reaching out to Community Bank, offering them our TV bank money market account, and um, asking them if they could meet or at least approach that right. loan rate. Um, so that's what I would hope that I would like to do mm -hmm. because administratively, really, that five thousand dollars would just be you're you're paying a salary to really push hard on mm -hmm. that. Plus, we're trying to consolidate right. Right. bank accounts right. in, in, in addition to all of that. So, what do you? What does the board want to do so that we can? Otherwise, if we don't make a decision tonight about something, letting Sandy move forward and discussing it, I mean, we'd have to wait till the 25th for the next meeting to make a decision. How would the board like to proceed? I would be in favor of um, definitely giving Sandra the authority to pursue what she just said. Mm -hmm. And um, now who has to, does the Full board need to sign off on the loan, or do you sign off on it? Uh, oh no, the they board would be signing a resolution, resolution to take the mm -hmm. loan. As the yeah. treasurer, there would be a few treasury documents that they mm -hmm. give. As you'd have to, it would be bonded or whatever, yeah. right? Well, I am bonded you through bonded. your VLC through okay. our liability insurance. Um, your your all of your employees Passive, are yeah. right, but. Um, there would be a few tax reporting documents, as I recall, that as the treasurer, I would be signing, okay. but you would be signing the resolution. Um, it couldn't go without mm -hmm. a select board signature. The, what I am concerned with is they're not gonna come down to that 2.74%. Um, so they have some question about who's in the town, the bank, the loan officer. You at know. some sick? Or at merchants. At, at merchants. So as I'm listening to, in the back of my head, I'm, I'm listening to Alfred, and he wants to get a loan for the truck. For the truck, right? So that truck, that those loans usually granted by the the dealer. 
we get them to the dealer. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. Because, and you might have to take a bite on that interest rate if you take it through the dealer. You know, most of our highway loans, as I understand the documents, are through Merchants Bank. Yeah, I mean, some of them are through the bank. I think all um, of them yeah, are truck loans. Oh, I So you yeah, mean no, your truck loans thinking. are through, no, the truck loans are through the bank. Oh, I thought we were getting um, to the dealer. But you if might we make, but, if we, but by the time way. we do that, we'll have the finished audit for FY17. Because if we have to hold a special town meeting, which Judy wasn't here to hear that lovely piece of things. Uh, I don't want to be that messenger. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can be, though. But are you no, thinking it's like I'll a carrot? Well, well, no, I, you know, I, I think that they will give us this loan. I think, though, that they are looking hard at the town's uh, financial situation. What they're looking at is a loan per capita ratio. Mm -hmm. They're looking at whether or not we've had a deficit, whether or not we've had a surplus. Mm -hmm. They're looking at um, what the, the loan repayment schedule to budget, overall budget ratio is. She mm -hmm. said she thought, I said, how, we, how do we look to you? She said, well, you look okay. So, um, but the she audit, didn't look at any great debt. She, she did not look at us plans. in any great right. debt. And she we, said it's we, a mosaic, and uh, she right. looks at That's whether right. or not we have reserves, mm -hmm. and which we, um, which we do. And we also have that money market right. account yeah, that, right, right now sitting there, which is which I'm sure they'd like to have at their bank. Why can't they put a lien against the building like they would do a home mortgage? I don't think they do that in a government in a government situation. Hmm. I've i not uh, you I know mean, even I don't, I don't get the building has value. It's well, the value is in your taxpayers. No, they I understand. I understand paid. it, but if they're unsure because of our books kind of being in disarray because we're going through this transition. It seems to me we can provide them a, some kind of security backup. Everybody was happy we were going into Nimerick. I can. Oh, you okay. without Good. a doubt Good. that that was um, That's huge, right? That was a very large piece of my conversation, and the fact that <clears throat> checks and balances. I, I lines, said the yeah. select board seemed uh, receptive to having ongoing annual audits. Mm -hmm. That also, if you don't mind, I did say that because mm -hmm. it's true. Yeah. yeah, it seemed to be. Receptive part of the said yes. That's correct. That's correct. Receptive was the word a, I used. You could be an attorney. I could yeah, be. She could be someday <laughs> when I grow up. And um, so I really pressed hard because I felt that I needed to. And so we do have these two hard bids now. Mm -hmm. People's Bank could come in, but they've already told me they, they're only interested in us if they had our deposit right. business. So I, I know no matter what bid they come across with, it would be contingent on moving everything mm -hmm. over. So we are facing that same right. situation. Right. Um, fortunately, whether it has a cost, as you explained, so it has it yeah. does have a cost, and you know, and mm -hmm. getting us into the Nimerick, cost, yeah. I can't. We that is That's not huge. a sacrifice we want to make. We don't really want to sacrifice the time it's going to take to get into Nimerick for no. to move over those no. funds because that was important to the people who I was speaking right. with. And I think, and like I said, I think by the time we get to anything to do with a truck, the FY17 audit's going to be done. They're going to be working on the FY18 audit. Right. You've already noticed that we might have a little bit. We might have a little, timing's great. Right. I mean, so I think I think it's I think it's all good. Things feel like yeah. they are together. Uh, knitting together. Yeah. They're not entirely sewn together, but the right. things are falling into place and yeah. I think that um, we're we're going forward in just the right way at yeah. just the right time. That that's okay. my thing. So if, if you would give me the authority to go back to community bank, yeah. talk and yeah. do you want a motion you don't or I don't think I, I don't, don't think, think I need a motion. Just, you just need to be able part to of your just, job. right. Just that's go back to them already. and see if you can work out a deal with them with the T D bank account and yeah. Um, I have what Alfred does, it's what you do. I have a long-standing relationship with Shelly Quinn, who is a VP in the governmental division. I, I know Donna used to work, used to deal with her too. Great. She's really good. 
So whether that helps or not, I don't know. But I would. I think that we're a we've been a customer there for a long time. That should help too. Well, I um, I hope so. I, I it should uh, help. yeah, and tell her that we signed a contract tonight for an audit once a year for three years. Right. So tell her yeah, we're being good up. good people here. And also, we have about five hundred thousand in loans from the Well, I don't know if that is. Good for us or not, not good, good for us? We have a good credit. Yeah, we have a good credit with them. I we think. make our payments on time. Uh, we haven't, as far as I know, defaulted never defaulted. on any We've loans. never defaulted. Um, we have, we're great with our delinquent taxes. Mm -hmm. They're very at, at, a, we're at an all-time yeah. low at this point. Yeah. So um, anyway, I, think, I, I mean, I feel really good about how that we're in fiscally really good place right now with NEMRIC, with the audits. I, we get into the internal controls. It's all coming. It's all coming around. It took a while, but we're getting there. Good people. Yeah, yeah. And Barbara Butler. And you. So I think we're. I think we're good. I feel really confident. It feels. It. It feels right. We're. We're. Yep. Doing it's a good okay. team. So that's where we are. I okay. will. Um, to. To. Further this, I will send an email to all of you, okay. hopefully, but before the end of the day tomorrow, letting you know where we are. And I don't know if you are allowed to decide by email. No, you're not. Can okay. we give her the authority to decide? No, that's what I was trying to get at. I mean, I'll be in on Wednesday. Oh, wait a minute. It. If she gives us a good bid and everybody, if, if, if all they really need to do is move down some. Right. Yeah, right. they need to move right. down some. Yeah. If they move down some, I will have her just simply have the loan documents here for Draft you on the 25th. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. And then you that's may have that's a decision point. And that's, yeah. right. That's, that's, right. Right. that's the decision that's your point. Deal. All right, we've got that. But if you want to talk about it further, I'll be in on Wednesday. Okay, well. There All right, there very good. Go. Thank okay. you. We won't keep you any longer awesome. so you can go home. It's almost 9 o'clock. Oh, well, did you wait? The for... chickens are roosting. She's not working at home. Oh, Why man. Stay? And... Oh, I did not remind them to close them in. You're probably... Too late. Raccoons are in. It's not the raccoons, you want, it's the weasels. No, not, no, not in the summer. It's and weasels the in the winter. So you're giving me anxiety. Weasels in the winter. <laughs> so we have house guests, and, house and that's very distracting for my family. I'm handing you out, before I leave, a, a, a budgeto actual report. Um, we are, uh, this is through this evening, the orders okay. written at, through this evening. You are still on track. We're uh, look at the bottom line. Your bottom Last line. Page. You're at. Uh, pardon me. Let me pop it so over there. So right now we're we have we're twenty eight thousand to the good under budget, right? Oh, more than that. I'm looking at the last page, Sandra. Net income. You are uh, eighty three percent of your overall. Budget. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, what page are you on? I'm on the very last page four. Yeah, that's where I'm at. So you're looking at a, a net income. You're you're looking at a percentage down there, but if you hop up, mm -hmm. you will see your have your total expenses. You're at 83 percent. Right. So your budgeted expenses were 1.6 million plus, and you have expended 1.3 million plus. So you are. Um, Okay, and we have one payroll left? One payroll, one payroll. yes. Okay. So no line item is really jumping out at me at and this the, point in time. And I've seen the bills come in from the highway stuff, so I know we're, they're getting caught up with stuff there. With the sand. Yeah. I haven't actually processed any sand bills, and the reason... Uh, oh, I saw something. Gravel. It was gravel. Gravel. Okay, gravel. Gravel, it's all not dirt sand. Right. <laughs> um, at this point in time, you're on an accrual basis. Mm -hmm. it, I probably, if I come in on the 25th, I, I would have another one of these for you. It is possible that you will see the sand uh, line item over budget. Uh, that is because you are on an accrual basis. Mm -hmm. All the sand expenses that were 
paid last June are for sand that was used in this winter, and that's two separate mm -hmm. fiscal, fiscal years. years. Right. So because you're on an accrual basis, it's an accounting requirement that those expenditures get pushed in to your mm -hmm. current budget. Um, and then any expenditures made on the next board orders, that would be on the 25th, you would see possibly that line item far and away exceeding what was budgeted for a minute. Because it's a minute then in time, in, right? Then in July, we uh, push them over into fiscal year 19. However, we're on a cash basis and we won't be doing that. Anymore. So anymore. So how the accountants are going to manage those journal entries, that mm -hmm. is for them to uh, figure out in their magical ways. And um, you're just not going to see that tonight. Yeah. Uh, 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 oh, uh, real quickly, the Canon copier, I heard you guys uh, speaking of that earlier. Yeah. Jonathan should have left. Paperwork for that, did he? Uh, so I completed that transaction. The transaction uh, did require uh, completion. And it is done as of now. The bid held, and uh, we will be trading. You mean it hadn't gotten processed? I thought we signed off. I thought that was all. It was all. Set. Oh, you. Uh, it's in the budget, and it's. But the paperwork hadn't been. Processed. Correct. So the paperwork is complete and delivery will take place sometime be at the end of this month. I'm just hoping it's not when the auditors are here. It's a several day. Well, just tell them not to. <laughs> Seriously, tell them not to. Well, we're, Why not? it's all going to be fine. We were really worried about this machine. It making its, you know. Uh, I know, that's why I, I hardly ever ask anything to be printed here. I just print it at my house until we get the new one. It's going to be fine, and we're going to weather that. It's going to be fine. It really I have stock is. out in Staples Toner right now. <laughs> so anyway, that that is that's pulled together, um, and we're going to be getting our new machine. It, there will be some overlap mm -hmm. between the time the new machine is installed, tested, uh, excuse me, delivered, tested installed and then the removal of the old machine. So there will be maybe a week where we're going to have two copiers. They give us some money for the old one? Yes, yes $500 in. will be the trade-in. Trade cool. So that's all fine. And um, one I think it'll be nice when it's here and up and running. I think you guys are really going to like it. Yeah, it, I, I, think, color. I think so. And, color's um, expensive. So yes, it is. We need to meter that. Oh, darn. I mean, I can't do financial reports and color. Come on. <laughs> if it makes it better to, for you to do the financial reports and color. Anything that makes it easier for you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, all of that aside, um, I heard John speaking about the office, and I do want to say that I appreciate the select board is uh, taking up that conversation with him. It can be really noisy in here, mm -hmm. and... Um, uh, it, it can at times be difficult to concentrate. In fact, it can be really exhausting trying to uh, back out the noise. And there have been phone calls, I'm sure, that Judy has experienced, Barbara and, and myself, absolutely, where I can barely hear the person on the other side because You're really the noise in the office is You're actually... The vault. Yeah, yeah they go, I, that's what they do. They go in the vault with you, the phone. You do. Or so, into the storeroom. Um, the one thing I love about this office, and I hope does not change, is the natural light, because when you're working on a computer, at least in my opinion, there's nothing nicer than being able to look out and seeing blue and green. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really grateful that you're uh, taking up this conversation, and, um, and I hope that you would um, talk to Judy and I mm -hmm. and Barbara for our input because we're working really hard to make everything as efficient as possible, but it, there are limitations. Well, I'm, no, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I think, you know, when we have a staff meeting, you know, we can talk about some of the configurations and of course you would be included. And then the select board, you know, if it's gonna cost money, is gonna get funnel. Approval. It's been my relentless, um, unrelenting focus 
to make sure that building is utilized to the maximum possible downstairs when it's done right. for yes. office staff as a first priority um, and, uh, and you know town use as a first priority. Um, so anyway, you have so that, that needs to be yeah. configured yeah. so that this is the first priority downstairs. Um, and so that staff aren't, you know, right. beleaguered here while that thing sits having birthday parties. You right. Know, so. No, I think it's going to get a lot of municipal fun use. Once it's up and running, I can already see where things could happen over there that don't need to happen here during the day. Right, right. If someone needs a quiet space, you should be able to go over there and work. Yeah. Well, I yeah. know John, it sounds like John is already putting his He's probably over there. creation, uh, his very creative mind to work, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's a great thing because sometimes, you know, the designer hates to change the design but um it he's, is he's true. flexible it's he's it, flexible. it can get it can get really noisy mm -hmm. i well I, i've spent enough time in here now to see how crazy it can be well it's, can vouch for it's it. fun i mean it keeps you wait yeah it is, it is fun <laughs> but i'm not here every day so Thank you so thank you, much. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. I'm having a great time working with you guys. It's, it's great really to have been, you. Um, it's, a, it's a really good fit. Good journey. It's a yeah. good fit. Yep. I'm enjoying myself. Good. I work with great colleagues, and I good. appreciate all the support good. that the board has given me, and uh, especially in this transition. So thanks. Well, nice thank, thank you, you so, so much. I appreciate everything thank you're doing. You. We really do. All right. I'm All right. Add another bill to here. Hold to your house. Yeah. 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 Sure yeah. oh, just like your husband. Yes. <laughs> the eclipto? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> all yeah. right. Town Hall. You guys heard all the stuff about the loans. You know where, where, where we're at with that. Um, we need to talk about the lifting and not a facelift. Come on up here, so we're close, <laughs> okay. like family. So I have to yell. Like family. Right. So we're all going deaf. <laughs> I'm very glad John is here, but he hasn't been here for the whole time that we've been throwing right. this around. So I, I off guess, drinking I scotch, guess that's huh? why he said, go ahead. Um, it's off drinking scotch. We were, uh, it was a group of, of uh, Jim Clark, Ernie Parrish, and me that talked to the, the um, they considered the two bids that we got. Um, we, we got, we had one from Messier uh, at 35,500, 35, um, and we were really surprised that we got one from Rick Gillies, who's a, a building lifter based in Concord, New Hampshire, for 16,800. I am That's a huge that difference, $18,700 difference. Geddes may have added a bit. I think Jim Clark said it best. Because it's really in the best interest of the town to um, look at the, to, to accept the lowest bid. Um, I told him this year that we were leaning in that direction. So it's our recommendation to accept the bid from Yep, yeah, this. We're, we're comparing their, their comparable bids. I spoke with work. Ernie just as I was Scope we of work. hanging. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said it, at first there was a question that they weren't comparable or mm -hmm. cross comparable, that there were some differences. Well, they both and bid on the same RFP. So no, no, but their there. approach one was going to have yeah. six uh, what do call it, grid yeah, yeah. areas, yeah. and this you know, the guy's going to have four, and, his, and how they were going to. Um, and what that would allow the contractors to do in, in forming up and setting up and reframing, whatever you do, the work underneath the building, it would it would be different depending on who the contractor was. So I just wanted to. Yep, Jim. You guys, Jim and Ernie and I met this morning there, and uh, you know we agreed that the four cribbing piles will work. Okay. So there's nothing in Getty's proposal that uh, keeps the thing from happening. Cool. And, and as as we go forward, we'll we'll be talking with Gettys. And, and, you know, I mean, you, you you hire somebody, and often you know there are changes. Mm -hmm. you know, we pay for them, but yeah. they are they are comp definitely comparable in experience. Yeah, amazing videos. I mean, it was yeah. good. Mm -hmm. you sent me those links, yeah. Scott. 
Yeah. So, in the best interest of the town, our recommendation is to accept the bid Gettys. from Gettys. Okay. Did you put the amount in there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the next step would be to work on a contract with him where we're going to make a. Um, I could get you the draft of the contract in the next day or so. Okay, is that it's the, the, it's the one that Jim? It's the one that Jim did, right? Yeah. Okay. So, and, uh, so, so the bid amount didn't change after your conversation with Gary. It's still the same. Yeah. Okay. So we should prove that tonight. And his yeah. availability meets our start schedule. and meet your yeah. time frame. Yeah. He said he wanted a week either side of August first, but he's able to yeah. able to come with that. Is that good for you, or is that too late? No, it's not too late. It's not too late. <laughs> Sure, no, wish I mean, it could no, have been because sooner? some of the things got in the way. Um, the bail, the, there's a period of time after which we, if we, if we can only spend money after a certain date. Any money that we spend before with regard to accessibility stuff, we don't get a, any grant money for it. So, so our schedule has been sort of knocked around by that. There's only, we really can't dive into the thing until after July 1st. Oh, okay. Right, because so, of the new fiscal right. So this is August 11th? August 1st. August 1st. When he's going to start. That'll be here before we know it. Right. Oh, don't say that. So how does that work? Is he, so how does that work? And we don't, I guess we don't talk about it tonight. You can tell me at a building committee meeting, but what does he do? He comes in and lifts it up and puts it on its things and then he goes away? And somebody does the excavation piece, and then he comes back and puts it down. Yeah, and pretty That's much. It? Yeah, pretty wow. much. Yeah, wow. just just the way you saw it, the, uh, uh, the house on County Road. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's interesting. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. amazing that you can do that. Yeah. The whole house. Yeah. Or town hall. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I would make a motion that we accept the bid for the RFP from Gettys in the amount of sixteen thousand eight hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Nice. Nice Thank work. You Excellent. Nice work. Okay. Got more to do? But yep. This is a good... It's a good start. I mean, you heard the discussion on the loan, so we're mm -hmm. yeah. getting that taken care of. Yep. It's all good. Yeah. Good teamwork. Well, we've got some wonderful volunteers. Some yeah, you do. Just we do. Keep cranking. Yeah. It is. It Despite is the beautiful weather. weather. Thank you. Yeah. But we let John have a couple of weeks off, so now he's good to go for another what? I mean, he did three weeks work this morning. Good night, Sandra. Good night, Good night. He's going to need three days just to recover from the jet lag. Yeah, yeah, at least. Yeah, it hasn't caught up with him yet, so. It's like it's three days. So John's way past your bedtime. It is. Yeah. It is. And, Scott's, and Scott's, too. <laughs> Get close to Scott's. Yeah. too, yeah. Through 12. Yeah, John, Scott made the analogy of me showing up at 8 o'clock meetings, mm -hmm. which I have done except for one. On Wednesday mornings, it's like him staying up to midnight every night. <laughs> <laughs> which we can do. Yeah, yeah. It's not preferred, but. Yeah, it's good. For our, the love of our town. Right. <laughs> so it's the, you know, overall, it's going great. Yeah. So I know it's not on the agenda, it's not directly related. Any updates on the church spire there? Any information you're, you're no, I, I in on that, aren't you? Yeah, I, I only went and looked at it today. I, I, oh. Well, yeah, I, I thought really you were working on that, too. Day, so <laughs> I'm on the building committee for yeah. it. But, uh, no, I was, actually, I, I was completely underwhelmed. They, they only took off the, the topmost yeah. octagonal section, and uh, it's not that big. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's three sections. Yeah, well, there's four. There's the rectangular oh, four. base, and there's two octagons, and there's a little cabinet yeah. thing. But uh, they're they're scabbing in, uh, scarping in extension pieces. Yeah. Okay, so I've been trying to get us out of here. Ninety thousand dollars for what? The church to fix that little cupola. Yeah, yeah that, call that. It spire. Wow. Or I shouldn't call it little. Uh, I know. Wow. It's amazingly expensive. So do you want to? Yeah, sure is. You ready to move on? Yes. Okay. Thanks. You're all Thanks, set. John. Good night, Thank gentlemen. You, Thank you. Thank you all so right. much. So, um, as you guys know, Cliff and I have been meeting with Alfred on a regular basis. And I think we've come up with what I would say is a final draft. And I just put it on here tonight to put it on your radar so that if you could review it okay. and make 
comments, suggestions. Send you to markups. Yeah. Um, Cliff's going to be out of town, so I might just catch up with Alfred to download from tonight, and then I'll be in here Wednesday to for the town hall meeting and to meet with Sandra and Judy just to keep things on track. And that's been working. They really, really appreciate the time that we're spending here. They really do. And it's a really, it's a really good team of people. I gotta say, I'm really proud of the staff we have. So there's a reason for everything. There isn't is. There? there is a reason for everything. Uh, one thing I will say about the job description is, we are going to take the bullet points and change them all at hitting hard with the action right so, the, so what you're seeing represents the, the gist thought. of it but yeah don't worry about saying oh we should you know, so action words that. at the beginning of the sentence you know okay. ability to and right. yeah, yeah yeah that kind of stuff we still have to fig we still have to fix that but i want you guys to look at it sooner rather than Content. later yeah. I actually looked at it today, and I thought it was pretty good, um, the thing, you know, and this is because I'm married to a professional truck driver, um, under skills required or something, to me, the first bullet point is, must hold a valid, clean, commercial driver's license. We make that the first bullet point. Make that the first, because we can't, you can't do anything without a... Right. Valid. Well, so we can make that change. That's pretty so easy that, to do. Yeah. So that, yeah. So that just like hit me first. Um, okay. Yep. Yep. So but other than that, I really thought you know it was good. And yeah, I mean we've been yeah. working on it diligently. Um, yeah. Alfred's really on. It took us a while. Yeah. He, it contains a lot. It does, and he's really on board with it. Yeah. He didn't really want to say junior, senior entry. Yeah. But there's got to be a yeah. way to define it. Yeah. Yeah. It has to, to be. Yeah. To, um, yeah. So he's that uh, skill requirement. Yeah. He's come uh, around. He's come a long ways in in his ability to talk with us yeah. about this without getting defensive. Yeah. So it's it's been good. Yeah. So maybe he's yeah maturing. Right. And so he's he's growing into yeah. Yeah, things, good. which is good. Yeah. Um. So that I wanted to give you an update on that, and then I'm gonna do my chair update for my new job. <laughs> Beavers on Kent Hill Road. John and I met with Toby and Alfred and Tyler Brown from Fish and Wildlife, is it? It's Fish and Wildlife, Fish right? Vermont. And, Fish right, and some other folks. And um, Stephanie was there representing the Conservation, Conservation Commission. Commission. Right. So the long and the short of it is that, and Rick Purchase was there, that we're going to put try putting in a beaver baffle. And so you know where that is, just beaver dams. Right across from the substation. Okay, right. yeah. yeah, I know where that is. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the river, the river, the stream, whatever. The, I don't know the, what, which stream is right up that. tight to the road there where, where the does that put the dam and so and there's a culvert going under so it's raising the water table. The, where does that go into? The, which river? Where does that go? It goes yeah. to Beacon Brook. Beacon Brook, okay. Which goes into the North Branch. North Branch which goes into the which goes into the main stem. Right. So anyway, so that problem got resolved with St. Lawrence River. Yeah. Land to go shoe. Put my shoe at you. <laughs> no. There was a dead beaver floating there when we were there. Somebody plugged it. Yeah, probably. But I think we got it resolved. Everybody seemed to be didn't wasn't hundred percent perfect, but Everybody realized that that's the best solution to the problem right now. We're going to try it and see if it works. And so who's going to do the installation? Tyler Brown yep. is going to do the installation. People said that they would come and help them when it was ready. Yeah. The town's going to buy the um, the tubing or whatever. It's what's yeah. that stuff called? Culvert. Culvert. To make the, we're going to buy the, the culvert piece. Tyler's going to bring the, the cage mm -hmm. piece. He, he, ma he actually manufactures the cage. Yeah, he makes yeah. it. And I, it's going to be in about three weeks. Is anybody cleaning the ones routinely in Adamant? Remember when they installed they those? Yeah. They have a crew. Somebody yeah. is supposed to that. take and them And Curtis home. Pond, that's, those guys are on their own to keep those beaver things cleaned out. Good. Yeah, so I think it was a good resolution to what was temporarily a crisis. Mm -hmm. And you know, the uh, Tyler, Tyler Brown, is that his name? 
Brown? Mm-hmm. He was saying, you pull the dam out, they're just going to keep rebuilding right. it. And so that's not a solution. Mm -hmm. And the culvert is a solution. Mm -hmm. Right. So. He said it, He said there was a chance that it wouldn't be quite deep enough where he's going to put it for it yeah, to so work. There's so there's there. just some adjustments maybe to make. Well, it seems like the ones in Adamant yeah, they were. are very I'm effective. I talk by it all the time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They've been very. Oh, here's the sign in sheets, Katie. Um, all right, next up, roadside mowing. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to so, so I'd like the board to consider, um, maybe not right now, but consider, and maybe it's for next season. I'm guessing it probably is, but the hiring of um, a summer summer crew, summer help, at least one one, and and one thing they could do is this mowing in between, and maybe we have Doug do the the main mowing so this guy would be a, a gal would be available to do other stuff well and you talked about but, also buying a and buying tractor. a tractor right um with a with one of those Mowing side arm stuff. mowers um, there's one on what, how much was that it was 7500 or something for this used it's john deere thing it's an right? alamo um yeah it's on craigslist it's I might be sold by now. And then, we, really could, and then we could do it. Because that mower's at 20000 Oh, we, then we could do it more often than even twice a year. Yeah. Which would, you know, right. would really help. And then, you know, I also wonder, you know, about one of the other towns. You know, could you get, I know the town crews don't like it, but could you go in on it together? No? No, because it, it this has to do with, if they're not as good as we are, if we're on this, we will mitigate the spread of the seed if they're sloppy with the use of it and they contaminate our machine with seed. Oh, I was they're thinking like fire this. it up and spread it all over our town. Well, I was thinking I it would think be the same a dedicated person. machine. Yeah. Well, and also, it could might maybe be used for doing other things too, like when yeah. the town hall stuff is done. We're going to have a, a bigger lawn to mow there. Yeah. And remember, we're the reason we do we'd be doing a five-time mowing is different plants go to seed at different times during the season, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, some later, some earlier, and so you want to hit them before they go to seed. And then you want to hit them again at least once, right? Or five times, you want to hit them, continuously hit them so you can right. them back. I wonder if the Vermont Youth Conservation Corps or through the state, if they have like a bank of interns that you know, this would be a good project. I thought you were going to say inmates. No, that too. <laughs> a bank of interns that are interested in this invasive stuff. There was a woman that was an intern, two interns. Interns pulling stuff? At, pot, at no, at, you know, you hire them, they keep an inventory, plus they do the mowing. Oh, you don't. And you make it. That, that, that's a dangerous piece of equipment. You need to have someone on payroll with insurance. Mm -hmm. Can't just bring it somewhere. I, I don't think so. I don't. In fact, I don't think the state would allow them to use a piece of equipment. They don't think like so. No. Tractors are dangerous. Yeah. They know what you're doing. They roll over. But I do like the idea of maybe us just buying our own. Yeah. It's not piece a, of equipment. It's only. You look at what we spend on equipment, and that'd be inexpensive. And Less than I know Woodbury of... used to have their own tractor with a mower. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they do that anymore. Well, we should bring this up when we're doing budget. Because we can put in, you know, mower into the budget. Right. right. So don't forget when we're doing budget, let's okay. put that in there. No. Yeah. It's tattooed. Okay. Um, we met with George Twig, who is Welch's chief chief of staff in Vermont, Peter Welch. It was of course two days after my fall. And yeah. I looked. Oh, a mess. I didn't know you fell. Oh yeah, it was a, it was. Bad. Pretended he didn't notice too. Right? right. Yeah. So I just like say, you know, you should have seen the other guy. <laughs> um, and we talked about, and I have the note where he followed up. I don't think we put it. Did we put it in the? Is it in the? Yeah, I read that. Oh, okay, so you read that. So I just wanted you to know that we had a good meeting with him. Um, we complained. What he said. We complained about the speed of internet. In oh, Vermont, right, right. Dallas in Broad general, band, yeah. And how much it costs yes, yeah. in general. <clears throat> um, we talked about um, grants, different things like that. 
So and what was his answer? Sorry, we can't do anything for you. We're too busy giving tax breaks to billionaires. Oh, no, we didn't mention that. We didn't mention that. No. I don't think that's do him. That. I don't think that's, that's him, though, right? U.S. policy. Is that Welch? No, it's Congress and our president. Oh, okay. So, he, yeah, but he works for Welch, so. I'm just yeah, I know. Funny, but funny, it's, it's funny. what the law is yeah. right now. Okay, we already we talked about roaming horses. And Jim's advice is not to appoint a pound keeper because the town, we don't, yeah. yeah. So we, we have to hit that. I talked to Merrick Kennedy, who's Lucky Dog Farm, about helping me write a plan for animals for our LEOP. So she and I need to get together. We had our first tree warden hearing last week on Thursday, and I went. It was, there's the statute, is like, tells you nothing about process. So this training that I was at last Thursday at the town garage, they're working on putting in requests to change, the, update the statute. I don't think it's been updated since 1969. Hmm. Um, there's absolutely nothing about process. It tells you nothing about how long, before a hearing you have to notice it. It tells you nothing about how soon you have to have a decision, nothing about an appeal, who the appeal would go to if hmm. somebody doesn't like your decision. Hmm. Nothing about process. So I brought that all those points up at this meeting and asked that they put in some legislation for that. Mm -hmm. They're trying to take out the wording of ornamental shade tree, shade tree, and make it be a little bit more. I'll tell you what, really, what they're talking about. Yeah. So that was interesting. <clears throat> I had a request from the school. They wanted to do a 5K race sometime in mid June. Mm -hmm. It was going to be up Lightning Ridge, Tucker Road, blah, blah, blah. And if you remember recently, we had a resident that was concerned about events taking place, bicycles, blah, blah, blah. People putting water stands by his driveway. Mm -hmm. the, the issue that he did raise, which is really a good one, was the town's liability. Right. So I double checked with the school, checked with Jim. The town would be liable. If there was a 5K race, or even these bike races, and somebody gets hurt, they could sue the town, mm -hmm. even though they, the bike people never even ask the town if they can use our roads. Mm -hmm. um, so, and the school was gonna try to get a waiver, their insurance company wouldn't do a waiver. So unfortunately, the kids' race got canceled. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so. So I'll just have to get a little bit of that. Um, I mentioned the resident request for consideration of an event ordinance. So, we'll so have do to, we need to follow up on the, the race issue overall due to liability and get... We probably, sh we should look at some kind of a event ordinance. I read that too. I wonder what the big towns like Manuski and Burlington do yeah. in terms of... I don't know. The league might have. Well, the league, um, Berlin has a, an event ordinance. There's Berlin's. Yeah. Yeah, I read that. But what do they do in terms of Insurances. Yeah, well, see, we have to we'll have to check all that out because it's really a good point. Yeah. You know the way things are nowadays, people give, mm -hmm. you know, any chance they can get to try to get some money. Tripped on a pothole. Yeah. Except, well, I'll pull in gerbil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, that's kind of that. Um, Poplar Cemetery. I should have put it on tonight's agenda, but I forgot. I don't, we're going to inherit that. Thing. Right. I don't know why we don't really have anything to do with it. They, the current owners are going to fold. The association yeah. is going under. They have to do something with deeds and stuff to give it to the town, which have to be recorded. The cemetery commission gets stuck with now. they got another cemetery to take And care. by operation of law, the town is obligated to take yes. on us an abandoned yep. <coughs> yep. cemetery. Yep. Yes. And so for them, it's going to incur unbudgeted expenses. Which right, there's a little, there's a couple of thousand, I think they said, maybe, mm -hmm. in the current account for Popular, they'll have to give it to Callis. Yes. Yeah. Um, the Planning Commission is working very hard on some zoning changes. Mm -hmm. Shoreland, um, oh, what's the other one Jan said? But anyways, Shoreland, Overlay District, um, Stormwater erosion, and so on. They're going to be having a hearing on June 19th, which is before our next hearing, our next select board meeting. Um, and they're encouraging people to come. It's kind of like a, this is I'm what we're doing. 
But if there's going to be three of us <coughs> that would might attend, I'll need to do an agenda, right? Because it could involve a discussion. Um, but that's what it is. Tuesday, 619 here, 7 o'clock. Um, and I'm going to plan to attend. The last thing, and I'm hoping this is going to work out for everybody. Remember we talked about getting together with the school board? Mm -hmm. Yes. And doing a joint meeting? Um, I finally got, Susanna finally got back to me. And she put the trash depot on the, her I, agenda? I did. It needs to be on her agenda, right? Well, so I'm going to do, do, do the agenda for our joint meeting. I know, but all right. So, but all right. So they'll adopt that the joint agenda. Yeah. They need to have it warned. Yeah. No, I asked her about the trash thing no, before. Approve it, right? Right. So the things that would be on the agenda, we're looking at trash depot, community engagement, Act Forty Six. So we're looking at July 9th at six o'clock. I don't know, Rose. Do you work? That day, or is this enough time that you could be here by 6? July what? Monday, July 9th, which is our first meeting in July. To do a joint meeting with the school board from 6 to 7. And we'll do it at the school. Do that on no, do it here. Because otherwise, then we have to adjourn there and come back here. Oh. Uh, for select board meeting. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Well, then they're going to fit you in here and go. Well, hold well, on. They're, they're, they just go home. Oh, they're not. It's no. not the normal. No, no, no. no. So I thought what I could do too is I could order some sandwiches and yeah. drinks and stuff for the meeting. Yeah. John wants to eat. Yeah. I'm, I'm off that right day. Now. Me I too. Wanna, I want to go home and have supper here. Yeah, yeah, me too. too. I'm off that day. So can you put that down? Yeah. Six um, o'clock. Six o'clock where? Are you available? Here. Here. Select yes. board. Right. Six you're available, John? P. Um, oh, Mondays. I never schedule anything on Mondays. You know, never in your whole rest of your life you can never schedule. Not allowed to. Mondays. That's right. Join, Gotta ensure we have a quorum. Right. Joint with Callis. School okay. Board. So I will let the so school board last, know. And um, generic item, whatever you call it. Or, um, there was a t we had got I we was reviewing the billing or something a while ago, and it came up that RB Tech mm -hmm. had a data storage charge that I thought was very high for one terabyte. Oh, we were going to find out about and that, right? I thought Cliff was. Oh, is that a cliff thing? Did you? If not, it's okay. I just want to know. Um, it's, we, we're the, Did you check into that? We talked. Uh, we talked to them at one of the staff meetings. We didn't know if that was an annual fee. Or That's right. Whether it was the annual fee or a monthly. It was event. an annual fee. It was annual. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's right. Okay. Yeah. No. Good. I'm glad. That's saying because drop off is a lot cheaper than. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but that's an annual fee, so then yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, that I mean if it's an annual fee, that's not too bad. Yeah. Okay. All that right. Was, you know. Um, I just want to make sure. Oh, you wanted us to talk about the personnel policy at some point. So the conflict of interest policy. Yes. At some point. So I went back. This is the most current one that we signed off on in November of seventeen. And I went back and looked at minutes mm -hmm. prior to us signing this. This is, this conflict of interest is for like, um, it's not for the employees. We were going to incorporate this conflict of interest into the personnel policy yeah, for the employees. Yeah. So that's on my list of one of my next oh, things great. to do. Oh, good. Okay? Thank you. Does that make, is that all right? Yes. That's okay. Awesome. And then at some point. I don't feel so bad now. You're, you're on, on stipend now, so you're taking on somebody who feel guilty at this point. Oh, so now you don't have to feel I don't guilty feel so guilty. And then at some point, I do want to talk about, you know, do you want me to continue to do this? Does it seem to be working out? I asked the office Absolutely. staff. They're they're very happy. They think we have a really good team. Um, Cliff's been a huge help with a lot of stuff. Been working so, the stuff off for the town. Thanks, Cliff. I mean, I think it, it really feels good. You know, like Sandra was saying with the loan and Nemrick and the town hall and. I feel cohesive. like it's, it's very cohesive, you know, and I'm in here at least once a week, sometimes twice, to talk to the staff. And I come in on Sundays and review the orders before our meeting. So, we said we'd try it until the end of June, so I just want to give you an opportunity to... What do you think, John, full review? Formal? <laughs> <laughs> Write me up. Go ahead. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> We could do a job description of all nine years. There you go. Well, I think um, 
I think I'm, I'm so pleased that you're doing this and you're doing such a fine job. Well, thank you, ma'am. I just want to know from um, the town's people's point of view, I mean, we did the charter because we wanted a select board administrator. Jonathan left. Now we're trying this other model. It's working well. Mm -hmm. but it, do we have to, at some point, say to the taxpayers, right now this current model is what we're going to do and right, this, we'll this, switch to the no, I hear board what you're administrator saying. The, the charter didn't make it so we had to get a right select board administrator that was part of the thought process right right the but charter it, change had to do with moving statutory duties uh, actually elected positions made them appointed Right, and we thought yeah. that we were going to need this select board administrator. We have saved a lot of money. I know, and we I saved a I, lot of money. I understand that, and I, I'm really pleased. And I so think, I just yeah. want, I don't want any of the, you know, the people to say, oh, we put this money in the budget, and now you, you know, he left, you, ne you never bothered yeah. getting another one, or you right. know, I just yeah. want to make sure that we're all clean. Go out clean. there and stir it up if you want. <laughs> Somebody, will, somebody will, more lively. Somebody will more stir it up. You're right, and even if it's all been for very good reason, mm -hmm. saving money, yeah. better efficiency, somebody will make it an issue, and make us the bad guy. Well, that you know, the, the thing what we didn't anticipate is that we would end up with a treasurer, appointed treasurer, that was a former clerk, right, and a former treasurer, right, and used to do the grants for the town of Worcester and the HR and is a licensed attorney and proficient in Nemeric. and you know right. she's just proficient in them we yeah. are so and, lucky and to have her bottomless Very list of, of, of capabilities so we never anticipated we didn't think those kind of people existed. first existed well, we just, and secondly would come to work for this little right you know, and she loves it here so, she know. loves it here that's yeah. good i'm glad yeah. right and you know there's just something that was found out tonight that she mentioned about the copier yeah. That we all thought was all set, yeah. all done, yeah. Yeah. and it wasn't. Yeah. 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 So, well, I just you know. So I'm it's like very. Pleased. But I think we're on a. I think we're on a good roll. <clears throat> Great roll. So. After and like I said, I, I still think 1st. we need we need a sign at above the door threshold that says. This is a no testosterone zone. Right. <laughs> if you'll note, it's all women running this town. And you notice how it's running like a well oiled machine. That's because we know what we're doing. All right. That's exactly right. So. John's a good Can husband. Can you tell? Huh? John's a good husband. Can you tell? Knows his uh, place. I think women. Women I think are, men are what's wrong with the world. I got this, are, that's my theory. Women, women don't organized. start wars. They don't build atom bombs. They women don't try to figure out kill ratio. It's a sign they try to right take there. care of people. Women at work? Yeah. We should have one of them here. Hmm? It's so sign that atom co-op says women at work. Yeah, that's that's another example. Yeah. That place would be bellied up with guys. We'd be like, that doesn't make financial sense. <laughs> Shut the doors. <laughs> So anyways, I, you right. know, in July we'll have to come up with, you know, if you want, officially announce it in the minutes. Yeah. There, there was an yeah. item here, Madam yeah. um, Chair, and I saw someone put check marks as if they audited this, this list. Um, garage maintenance. Uh, that was the doors. Vermont Door Company, eighteen hundred and seventy-one dollars. What did they drive a truck through a door? No, it's just the general maintenance on those big, huge garage doors. Holy smokes. They come off the tracks and everything else. Is this an they annual do thing? Yeah, I think they just have them come out once a year and Whoa. do maintenance. I thought I saw it, too. I was like, that's, whoa. That's kind of steep. Yep. It is. But it I'll is make a famous. motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.